Hey, Larry, can you hear me? Larry, can you hear me? I can hear um, you. Can you hear anything? Yeah, I can hear you. Hey guys, um, to all of you guys watching, welcome. Um, I'm just sorting out some some issues with uh, with Discord right now. Um, I got my friend Larry on the line. Uh, he's gonna be a uh, guest on the show today. Everybody here, my friend Larry now. Okay, um, I think we're good. Uh, Larry, say something. Uh, why don't you um, introduce yourself? Okay, so hey, I'm I'm Larry. I'm a friend of. Uh, Brad here. Um, I'm not sure uh, what I should uh, <laughs> do to introduce myself. I'm, uh, I'm an electrical engineering student at a university in Canada. Sorry, there's a problem with the audio right now. Give me a moment. Yeah, I think you guys can still hear me. Um, basically, Larry and I uh, have, have known each other for more than four years now, and we, we kind of just, um, you know, hang out and hack around together all the time. So um, I'm really excited to have him on the, uh, on the show today. Um, Larry seems to have some problems hearing me, so let me see what's, what's wrong on my end. I, need I can to... hear you, but there's, I can hear myself after about three seconds. Oh, oh, I think, I think I know what was wrong. Can you hear, I can't hear you anymore. Uh, I'm still, I'm, I'm, I'm talking right now. I wasn't talking before. Say something? Yeah. Hello? Sound check. Uh, Larry, do you want to revert to using using your phone like we, we were before? before okay, we okay. I think, I think this is working now. Okay. You can hear me? Uh, however, I can't hear myself. in one year or something okay um okay i can get used to that <laughs> okay we'll work something out sorry guys i, I I'm, I'm terribly sorry about situation okay but is, every, is everything sorry. is everything good now uh, i can hear you Do you want to switch back to your phone? Because I think that was working before. I think the problem right now is that you're on speakers, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And what that's doing is it's feeding bad. How are you? Oh, okay. I'm, I'm really sorry about this. How are? Oh, I see. I see. I, I know what you mean now. Hold on. Let me, um, I know what to do. Um, Gary, 
go. Look at this. We got uh, got a little microphone here. There we go. Computer problem solving in real time. This is this is totally this is totally uh, pre-programmed content. This is this is part of the show. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, I'm really sorry about this. Because, uh, no problem, dude. Yeah, so, um, before here, but, uh, this is sort of you know, uncharted territory. <laughs> yeah, Larry, can you hear me now? Larry, can you hear me now? Um, I'm not getting any sound. I can hear some audio now. How about right now? Oh, that was very loud. <laughs> Sorry, uh, let me turn down the boost. Okay, so you can hear me now, right? Um, I can hear you. Okay, great. Um, is there an echo still? Yes, unfortunately there is, but this might be something we just need to live with. Okay, that's fine. Um, cool. So, uh, let's get started. We're uh, eight minutes in. I think uh, we, we, can, we can get started. Um, this is a Monday, so probably viewership is going to be a little low. Uh, but I really wanted to show you guys uh, at the same time that, I, that I'm experiencing it. So... I haven't even opened this at all. Um, still in the seal. Let me set up my camera nicely. Okay. You guys in the um, live stream can hear me just fine right now, right? Great. Uh, thank you guys so much for, for being patient with us. Um, the, the reason we have this weird setup is because um, we're, we're actually using my phone to, to stream. I don't have any like advanced screen, streaming equipment. Um, I don't have a webcam or anything that's... I mean, the only webcam I have is, well, you know, that. So that's not very good. Um, so I'm using my phone. All right, cool. Let, let's get started. So let, let's, let's, uh, let's start the unboxing. So... Um, got this straight from China. A friend of mine brought it over and this is uh, from Huawei's store, uh, online store. And it says it comes with uh, Microsoft Office, uh, which is, says an a value of about $100. Um, I don't really care about that. I'm subscribed to Office 365. Um, there's the um, like energy efficiency label from China. Um, so that's but, the... Uh... China energy label, right? Yeah, that's right. Now, I'm, I'm actually curious on how that's going to affect the power settings on this. Because I do know that, at least with TVs, I think one of the reasons why brightness and whatnot were limited for a while is because they wanted to meet certain energy efficiency targets. Right. So if there are certain um, energy efficiency targets that are that are um, being enforced, then we'll try to defeat those by disabling power throttling and all that kind of stuff. So that said, I think most of the power limit stuff should be mostly a thermal and power issue. Yeah. See, this this is this is why I love having Larry on the show because. Um, He's, he's really uh, quite an expert in, in a lot of these things. He knows some crazy shit that, that just like so never fails to surprise me every time. Um, Larry has his own channel. Um, and uh, I'll put a link down in the description for you guys to, to check out. Um, Larry, you, you want to just tell everybody how, how people can find you? Um, I actually don't have one of those convenient YouTube uh, links. So I've actually hopped into the chat right now. I think you can just... Click over. Uh, I'm not sure if that works. 
Yeah, and you can also see Larry's channel on my uh, channel tab on my channel. So it's one of the channels that are linked uh, from my channel page. So right now there's not, not a huge amount of content on there right now. I have uh, I reviewed one of the little what do you call this little uh, GP platform. Uh, and did, didn't you like create a? Didn't you swap in a different fan for it? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yeah, no, that shit's cool. Okay, great. So um, here it is. I did not buy the new jade green version. Um, it's still the same color that I have. Uh, this is my, now my third mate book. My, my first mate book is here. Um, <laughs> this is what remains of it. I, I have the motherboard somewhere else. But uh, I, I killed this with liquid metal thermal paste by not being very careful with it. And then, of course, you saw earlier I have the 2019 mate book extra as well. So this is my third mate book. They're all the same color. So those keys, are, are they uh, just regular scissor keys? Yeah, they're scissor keys. They feel pretty nice, but yeah, they're kind of similar to, I would say, the 2015 MacBook Air. Hmm, that's, uh, that's interesting, because I tried it in-store. I would definitely compare it more to... What was that machine? It was the, the new Magic Keyboard on the 16-inch MacBook Pro. Hmm, okay. So you got uh, the NVIDIA version. Yeah, so so let's talk about the, the con configuration that I got. So uh, it's got the MX250, so nothing's changed with the GPU from 2019 to 2020. I believe it's still the 10-watt processor. I'm like 99% confident. Um, and then I have the i7. This is the 10710U. Uh, that's, that's a really long model. Um, but that, that is six cores, um, Comet Lake, still 14 nanometer plus plus. So there's, that's the, probably the one of the uh, last 14 nanometer uh, series of CPUs you're going to see from Intel. And, and of course, uh, it's a, this is a 15 watt part with configurable TDP up of 25 watts and TDP down of 12.5 watts. That's right. Um, of course, the base frequency is only 1.1 gigahertz, uh, which is pretty big difference from the max turbo of 4.7. Yeah. So quite a lot of, quite a big range here. Normally, I think in 2013, a processor like this would easily be like the H or an HQ series, but they don't do that. Actually, they do, but that's reserved for like high, high end. Um, so, so I mentioned in a previous video, the, uh, the video in which I made a second heatsink for the MateBook X Pro, um, it's on my channel, check it out. Um, I explained how scalable these, uh, new CPUs are, you know, a 15 watt CPU can pull, uh, upwards of 45 watts, so it punches way above its class, as long as you, you can expand the cooling capacity. Let's see what's going on in here. And as for the uh, six cores and the very low base clock, so the base clock is always measured at the TDP. So it it basically means that if you are uh, stressing the entire, uh, I believe both the CPU and the integrated GPU at the same time, uh, as well as uh, basically the entire chip is is under stress, and then is under load, um, and then all six, you know, which means all six cores are active. It the frequency is gonna get dropped to 1.1 gigahertz because of the 15 watt limit. However, I think that 15 watts is package wide. Yeah, so that's right. So if you're actually using the GPU, you're going to actually get less. Um, yeah, um, I, I'm, uh, yeah I'm ta I was saying like the uh, integrated GPU cores. Yes, the TDP is generally, yeah, it's for the for the uh, whole Intel chip. Yeah, yeah. so of course, if you have a, excludes the uh, MX250. Indeed. Yeah. So we got uh, we got some some uh, little booklets, getting started booklets in Chinese. Uh, don't really care about those. Let's see what's in here. We have our charger. So um, very fortunately, this happens to be compatible with uh, American law outlets and uh, as well as Canadian North American law outlets. Um, so you have the, uh, the switching, same, same switching uh, power supply as before. Uh, I don't think there's any changes to the power brick. 
um, nor the power cable. Okay, let's see if there, I mean, there's anything left in here. I don't think so. Okay, yeah, that's the bottom of the box. Okay, very, very simple. Uh, not a lot of uh, accessories. Um, but then again, you don't really... Uh, oh, look, uh, but you, there's something interesting about that box. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I know, this is sort of nitpicking. What's that? Uh, but the box actually, uh, it lifts up when you open the lid. It lifts the laptop up. Oh yeah, that's right. That's that's uh, with yeah, some uh, uh, rudimentary uh, origami right there. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, yeah, that's kind of cool, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, um, I'm, I'm, I know I'm gonna get hate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, you know what? One thing of note though is that uh, I don't think there's the mate dock included anymore. Um, they used to include one. Yeah, I th yeah, I believe so. You know, actually, I've never actually uh, unboxed any, any of these myself. It's, it's always been um, a friend of mine bought it in China and then brought it over. And like by the time they brought it over, it's already been unboxed for me. So this is actually the first time I'm seeing a box. But I believe I believe the Mate Dock was included um, for all the markets. Okay, well, that's a, that's a good uh, add-on. All right, so... How many ports does it have? So, uh, the, you mean the Mate, bo Mate Dock or the computer itself? No, the computer itself. So, um, the great thing about the MateBook X Pro, and one of the reasons I chose it over the XPS 13, is because it has uh, two USB-Cs, one of which, right here, uh, the one right here is Thunderbolt 3. Um, it's four lanes now, 40 gigabytes, uh, gigabits per second. And then on the right here, you have a USB-A with uh, USB, uh, USB 3.0. Okay, so they still have that. Yeah. And um, just like the 2019 model, we have the Huawei Share sticker. So this is, uh, it's got a little little chip inside, right? And, and uh, when you bump your phone, uh, NFC-enabled phone to it, it uh, basically pairs the phone that looks with the laptop. suspiciously like a 6th-gen sixth, sixth Intel uh, sticker. Yeah, yeah. I think they definitely took some inspiration from that. <laughs> Okay, so let me let me reorient my camera so that we can see the screen. And um, I know that some of you guys on the uh, on the subreddit have have been asking about the experience of uh, reinstalling Windows and changing it into the correct language. So let's walk through that process today. Um, let's see how that goes. I usually just don't really um, take notice of it. I just I just throw on you know my Windows 10 Pro installation and just install everything from scratch. So, uh, yeah, it's looking really pretty. Um, as far as I can tell from the outside, nothing has changed. So this is really effective in terms of uh, their production uh, efficiency. They don't have to retool any of their production processes. So um, it helps, you know, bring the costs down so that Huawei can make more money, I guess. But also, you know, the costs probably get some of that um, cost reduction gets transferred to the user, uh, hopefully. But, um, I mean, part I, of this is, uh, I think there's there was some controversy with uh, you know Huawei and uh, you know, Intel yeah. components. I think a lot of this, uh, they probably didn't want to go all in local you know, GPU design. Yeah. So um, I don't think it has power right now, so I'm just gonna plug it in. Same the power cable. Still um, it's, it's, I think it's always been, uh, been 65. Oh, okay. That's nice. Yeah, it's, it's pretty compact for a 65 watt. Oh, yeah, for sure. I will say, you know, it's too bad they don't, uh, have the removable plug-in. Oh, right, so that you can, uh, travel with it. Well, actually, it's more for, uh, extension cables. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I, I have the, you know, I have the Apple adapter. Wow, these uh, these ports are really tight feeling. These are uh, these are definitely. Oh, what the? Okay, so so this is this is a interesting uh, development. Um, I've never seen this kind of screen before. This is a uh, end user license agreement in Chinese. Um, so let's see what it says here. Uh, let me try to translate this. Um, wow, you need to be of legal age to be able to. Uh, to uh, consent to this agreement, <laughs> it says. Um, 
uh, says you can you can uh, return the the unit under the Huawei return policy. Um, like yeah, return instructions. If like basically rules for for return. Um, interesting. What are the uh, go go through the. Uh, uh, oh wow! The there, there's a whole like. There's oh my god! Look at this. There's there's so many pages of this. This is a whole end user uh, license agreement. It, it literally translates into end user uh, well software license agreement. So um, well, this is interesting because it looks like this is actually implemented in the firmware. Yes. <laughs> this is this is this is funny. <laughs> sort of weird. Yeah, I've never seen this before on any uh, any computer that that I've ever had. Have you, Larry? <laughs> no, I haven't. Uh, the the only thing that manufacturers tend to do is put this in the initial setup, but I've never seen anything like this in the uh, in the firmware level. Right. Okay. Let's just. Uh, hmm. Is that a mouse pointer? Yes, it is. Can, can it move? Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. So, so um, the, the the contents of this it says um, something about third party software, um, something about uh, limited liability, something about uh, technical support. Oh, this one's interesting. Th this one is export controls. So, yeah. I I wonder. Okay. So, um. Oh, okay. So it says it says um, you can't you can't export Huawei software, uh, except when it is uh, it is authorized. Okay. Well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, it, what it really should say is you can't import Huawei software unless it is authorized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, whatever. Um. That's our little uh, detour into into uh, into some uh, some legislature, but uh, let's let's yeah, just uh, check the focus. yeah. I think I think the the room is too bright, so I'm gonna try to turn down my uh, my light here. The, uh, the peacock logo is gone too. It's just uh, yeah, probably... and that's that's been the case since uh, since 2019. Uh, yeah, uh, this is like really reflective, but uh, once. Okay, so this is this is like the Chinese version of the Windows initial setup where Cortana is supposed to come in, and uh, they, they do have Chinese Cortana. <laughs> okay, let, let's get rid of Cortana. Okay. So, you know, what's interesting is in. English versions of Windows, Cortana no longer talks during the initial setup. Oh, is it, is it off by default? Yes. Hmm. I think they did that after someone posted that. Hey, I'm yeah. Cortana for the first time. Yeah. Hey, Larry. Um, you want to do me a favor and uh, and kind of uh, take a take a look at the the live chat every once in a while and see if there's anything interesting to discuss from it. Sure. Oh god. So so this is where you select the countries and all of the country names are listed in Chinese. Um, and I think they are in order of uh, Chinese pinyin, so they're they're sort of alphabetically uh, ordered. So I found I found America, which is where I'm in right now. So let's go ahead with that. Uh, you can't uh, one, one moment before you go forward, you might want to uh, have a focus the camera. <laughs> I was yeah. going to say you, you I don't think there's focus controls on the uh, YouTube uh, app. Oh, no. um, is it that bad? Uh, well, it, it was bad enough you couldn't read it, right? Um, and of course, you wanted uh, to show people how to change it into English. So. Oh right, yeah, that's one. That's one. Yeah, you see, I so sort of forget. You know, what like, you can probably do though is uh, just put the Chinese characters. Um, okay, so yeah, uh, hopefully, ho hopefully, uh, those of you who are interested in the setup process were able to sort of follow. Um, I guess 
by the by the general locations of the buttons that I'm clicking. So that's accept. Okay. So uh, we have a question in live chat. Uh, Dogo says, Brad, I got a question. Why do you keep buying MXP? Like, there's the Asus G14 4900 HS with a lot more power in around the same form factor. Huh. Interesting. What What is the uh, Asus G14 4900 HS? I wonder. Oh, that's the that, HS. That sounds like Ryzen. That's uh, yeah. That's Zephyrus. Is that, is that Ryzen? Yeah, it's Ryzen 9. Okay, Zephyrus. Uh, I mean, it is bigger than the, the MateBook X Pro still. It is like definitely in a, in a slightly higher weight class. And, and the fact that it has a 16 by 9 screen doesn't, it's, it's not really, um, like it is about the same, you know, screen size. But in terms of like the, the size of the laptop though, um, in terms of like the volume of the laptop, it is more. So, okay, that, It's definitely a lot thicker. So that right there was asking for a password, so I just skipped it, set no password. This is uh, activity history, I'll set no. I really don't care about the this, this system setup right now. Um, I'm going to see if, if uh, you know, we can, um, I'm basically rejecting all the, all the Cortana features and whatnot. I'm going to accept this, because you can't, you have to accept that one. So that's so, good. So Zephyrus um, is definitely in a whole other weight class. You know? Yeah. It's definitely going to be just, so um, the the so one of the reasons I, I keep sticking with the MateBook X Pro, actually I, I think I found the uh, the focus feature here. I I wonder if I I don't know if it locks though. It seems like I have to keep pressing. It's kind of stupid. But the reason I keep coming back to the MateBook X Pro is um, a few reasons. One, I love the the fact that it has the, the ports that I need. So if you look over here. On my on my setup right so this TV is this 55 inch uh, Samsung 4k TV is being driven by the MateBook X Pro via a uh, RTX 2080 Ti eGPU so that's sitting in a, in a well it's it's it was an eGPU enclosure now it's no longer enclosed because I I uh, took off the covers so it's just an open air case but it's got its own power supply and then it uh, it goes to the TV via HDMI, HDMI 2.0, and then it's connected to my MateBook X Pro via Thunderbolt 3, and I get four lanes to the external graphics card. And it gives me very, very good performance um, whenever I'm running Premiere Pro, for example. So um, I'm not really concerned about exactly how, how good the internal GPU in the laptop is, because often when I'm doing really uh, intense work, I'll be connected to the eGPU. And that's why I'm totally fine with the uh, MX250 instead of something like, uh, you know, uh, RTX 2060 Max-Q or something like that that you yeah, would find in the gaming laptop. The, uh, going back to the whole Zephyrus thing, um, that computer takes about 30 watts idling, so battery life is limited to about 4 or 5 hours. Yeah, doesn't that have like uh, G-Sync or FreeSync or something? Yes, I think it has a discrete GPU. I don't remember which one. I think yeah. it's uh, yeah. Okay, so so we're now in the system. Let's let's uh, let's first connect to Wi-Fi. There's not a lot of stuff on it. Yeah, I'm really I'm really surprised. Well, you know, there, there's gonna be Candy Crush and shit like that <laughs> once I connect to Wi-Fi. <laughs> These arrows, right? Um, they might be a slightly different, slightly different set of apps that get automatically um, loaded onto your uh, your bloatware OS. Um, it says GeForce Game Ready Driver is available. So okay, so we've got uh, Nvidia drivers already. We have some questions in chat. Uh, we Brad, when you set up Windows, could you please show me Nvidia Control Panel? Because I have just a few options there. It looks like I'm missing something. I also don't have access to CPU integrated drivers options. Interesting. Okay, so the first thing you want to make sure is that you don't have any um, out of date drivers. Um, those drivers, GPU drivers, are one of those that uh, up update pretty often. Um, but other than that, um, so if you just look up uh, Intel on your uh, on your start menu, you should be able to find the Intel control panel, which we're not really seeing right now. Um, but I am I'm, I am noticing a, 
the lag that is kind of characteristic of the usual um, uh, panel self-refresh that has plagued all generations of the Matebook, so I'm not expecting anything different here. Um, but I am not seeing any uh, Intel graphics control panel right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the, the drivers, and it says oh, there's, um, there's there drivers is, available. It, it, there is. Uh, it's, 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 it's in the start menu. Oh, it is? Okay, I must have missed it's it. It's called Intel oh, yeah. Graphics Command Center. Okay. Somehow when I searched for Intel, it didn't, didn't uh, open up. It uh, didn't uh, show up in my search results. Oh, that's why. Yeah. So, so Intel has moved to, to the new like UWP, um, U UWT, uh, UWP platform for, for its uh, control panel. Um, but it's, it's really the same thing wrapped in a different package. Uh, you still... But now, let me actually first change, try to change the language. So, um, let's see. Language... Change it from Chinese to uh, let's add English. English. Uh, by the way, I'm going through these steps really quickly. So, like, if you're looking back at this, um, watch it in like 0.25 speed or something, and that might be able to help you navigate through these steps. Yeah. So I'm gonna turn off um, voice recognition and uh, handwriting and dictation for now, because those are large packages that I don't really want to spend time downloading right now. Um, now, so this is interesting. So this says, Windows That means your uh, Windows license only supports one type of um, display language. Um, and I'm guessing that is referring to, that is referring to uh, Chinese. So, so you can't you can't swap a Chinese uh, copy of Windows and turn it into uh, turn it into English, which is really limiting. I, I think this is because it's the OEM license. Because I have been able to change languages on, I think um, Windows Ten Pro purchased. This is Windows Ten Home, right? Yeah. So there are some limitations with Home, I think. Yeah, you don't get uh, what was it? Uh, group policy editor, which which uh, I make extensive use of. So of course, um, I don't know if you can get enterprise individual licenses, and you know, I definitely don't want to you know, go there on YouTube. But uh, enterprise does have features that you don't get in Pro. Right. Um, you know, uh, isn't education like basically the same as enterprise? I think there's some differences. The main thing that everyone keeps talking about with Enterprise is in Group Policy Editor, you can go and set Windows Update Policies. And the number one thing I do on all my Windows computers is go to Group Policy Editor and set up the Windows Automatic Updates thing under Administrative Templates, Windows Components, Windows Settings, just to set it to notify, to download, and install. Right. That way, it won't download updates by itself or reboot or install them and cause the laptop to get hot when I'm you know, out giving a presentation or something. Yep. Okay, so um, I'm in the NVIDIA control panel right now. Um, seems pretty standard, even though it's in Chinese. Um, yeah, but basically what you have to do is you go into like these application settings or the uh, global settings and you kind of just set like the GPU that you prefer. Um, there, there's guys on that uh, all over the internet. Um, it shouldn't be, it should be pretty similar. Some, some uh, okay, so desktop graphics cards do have more options though. Okay, so I think part of the reason why someone's saying they're missing options is uh, on this laptop, the screen is probably connected through the Intel GPU. So all your resolution and display management settings are probably part of the Intel driver mm. instead of the NVIDIA driver. Yeah. Okay. So um, someone is asking about uh, whether the Dolby Atmos is working. So I personally am not concerned about Dolby Atmos, but let's check it out anyway, because um, if you don't know already, um, I, I wrote this sort of software package, sort of, uh, it's not exactly like an app or anything, but it's sort of like a software package that, uh, it's called Dynamic Q, and it optimizes your laptop speakers 
um, in my opinion, way beyond what Dolby Atmos offers. Um, what you're seeing right here, though, this is uh, interesting. So, so um, if if I may, I would like to go into a little bit of a of a commentary slash rant about um, the Chinese software industry. Chinese uh, software um, developers love to recreate uh, code that has already been written by somebody somebody else. Uh, for for no other reason, just to just to recreate it so that it's theirs now. Um, so, for example, right here we're seeing Huawei implemented um, as part of its PC manager software a screenshotting tool, and that is, I think, uh, to to give you the functionality of of uh, being able to you know um, uh, take screenshots with uh, four fingers swiping down on the screen. But what they simply could have done is remap the four finger gesture, listen for the four finger gesture, and send a keyboard shortcut or any kind of um, you know, Windows uh, standard uh, command to uh, invoke the shift uh, Windows S uh, snipping tool that already comes with Windows. And, you know, it's, it's got the same functions as what Huawei is providing here, where, where you can select a, a box, you can select a, a lasso. Actually, um, could you uh, demonstrate the uh, Huawei version? Yeah, so here, here we go. So th ever since the 2019 model, this is... Uh, what what they what they would uh, consider a um, software feature that uh, is like a, a value uh, value added feature. Um, I don't know why it's not working right now. Oh, okay. So you need to do three fingers instead of four. Um, my mistake. And uh, what happens now? Okay. Um, oh. Can you just tap in the middle. Yeah, you tap in the middle to take the entire screen. I think there was a. I didn't. I didn't really read it carefully, but like, there's different gestures that you do to to take um, to take the, the different types of screenshots. So, so a tap might be the entire screen, and then you know, if you draw different shapes, it might select a window. Can or... you uh, do like a what do you call that? Like a a partial selection. Oh, like a, like a custom like rectangle selection. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I think that was part of it. Um. I saw one of those options, but yeah, so uh, I forgot. I forgot where that that was. Um, is this I, the native software? Or? Yeah. Well, this is this is part of PC Manager, which which takes care of software updates for 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 MateBooks, as well as oh, they implemented the um, similar translucent, um, blurry glass style uh, fluent design like um, interface here. But as you can see, this is really really funny. Um, I don't know what kind. Oh, they're they're probably using um. Windows.net framework because the pointer here usually you know you don't get this type of uh, crosshair pointer with um, with native Windows apps either uh, whether we're talking about Windows Win32 or UWP apps we don't really get this type of pointer uh, we usually get it with uh, with .NET framework especially older versions of .NET I think um, and so that's another that's another quirk of Chinese software I guess to be fair uh, it looks like. This particular implementation isn't too <clears throat> too bad. Um, most OEMs right now they do ship a application like PC Manager with their computers. Uh, oh my god! They they literally recreated this shit. Every everything's the same as the as the stock thing, but I mean it's got a little bit more features. Yeah. But um, I mean to be fair, on. yeah, it's uh, I think part of this is that. I don't know if they've added it in the newest versions of Windows, but screenshotting in Windows has historically been sort of limited. Oh yeah, like and you used to use the I snipping know, tool, right? Yes, and, and you have to open it and all that. And, uh, yeah, well now you on, just use Shift uh, Shift Windows S, and you've got you've got your your uh, rectangular selection, you've got your um, lasso selection, and uh, window selection, and uh, full screen selection, and it automatically okay, uh, so copies it into your uh, clipboard. As well, and then you can oh. click on the. It opens up in your in your action center in your notifications, and you you have. And when you click the notification, it opens up this, and you can crop it. You can annotate it. Um, you can annotate, right? And then you can save uh, as as like different uh, different um, image formats. So it's pretty feature complete at this point. Oh, so so it's basically like the uh, Mac OS screenshot functionality. Kind of. So um, here in PC Manager, it's pretty much the same uh, as far as what I'm seeing here. I don't see any extra uh, super notable features. Um, one thing that I found kind of interesting is that they slightly changed the uh, the model uh, model naming scheme. So 
the first uh, generation of the MateBook X Pro was uh, called uh, Mach, uh, probably named after Ernst Mach. Um, I think he was a physicist, right? Uh, famous for the, the Mach number. Um, and then the second generation uh, was Mach R. R might stand for revision, I think. But now this is Mach C. I guess C is the third letter, third generation. Um, and then instead of uh, WX9, you have WAX9. Um, they might have increased the number of variations. And then on the on the box, there was like a whole string, a string of um, like more detailed uh, version of the model number right there. Uh, Mach C WAE9D. That is like really, and there's a different one, WAE9LP. So I don't really know. Um, but what I do know is um, I did go for the 512 gig SSD instead of the one terabyte SSD because other than the SSD, these two configurations are exactly the same. So I just needed the 16 gigs of RAM and the i7 and the NVIDIA GPU. And then I'm just going to swap in my uh, Samsung uh, 970 Pro M.2 SSD. Uh, anyway, so, and that's one terabyte. So I don't really care about the SSD. I, I specifically went for the uh, smaller SSD. Are there any power options in? Yeah, so great question. There is power options. So this is really interesting because I don't know what this is actually doing. I Let's see if it, uh, it doesn't seem to be um, interfacing with the um, battery slider uh, in Windows. So I'm switching, so this says performance mode, this says balance mode, and then this says power saving mode. And uh, no matter what mode I set, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, change the, this mode here. And, you know, I, I really don't know what it's actually doing. Um, I don't know if it's, you know, uh, if it's got, like, um, I don't... On most um, OEMs now, the PC manager after it's called Armored Trade on Asus computers, it actually changes the... It interfaces with the embedded controller on the motherboard, yeah. and it changes the power limit settings. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, I know this that uh, the Razer Razer Blade does that too. This is across like Dell, HP, I think. Uh, yeah, I think Dell does it for sure. Yeah. So I'm just going to like translate these for you. So uh, it says uh, performance mode, uh, high performance. The, the computer will run under high performance uh, with high performance. And the uh, fan will speed up to um, better the cooling. Interesting. I don't know whether that is actually modifying the fan curve or is, or if that's just implying that uh, that's just telling you it's a natural consequence of uh, the computer running faster. Now, of course, the uh, other computers, they do modify the fan curve. Yeah. So that's definitely um, probable. Now, uh, so this just says uh, it'll, it'll intelligently adjust the running speed, the operating speed, the... Uh, performance and uh, battery life uh, will both be, I guess, like preserved. Um, and then uh, this is power saving mode, so it provides longer battery life and relatively quiet experience. Um, now this this means intelligent speed boost. This is kind of okay. <laughs> so this is this is funny. So this says um, under high loads, it'll intelligently clear background processes to optimize your CPU um, to speed up your system. Okay, we have all of that. Yeah, so this is like really um, your run-of-the-mill like PC manager, like not just from Huawei, but there's like a whole lot of PC manager type softwares from China. So they probably just copied a lot of features from there. Um, this is- now, You know what would be interesting, I think, um, if we go ahead and hit control of delete right now, um, bring up task manager. Bring up task manager um, and put the CPU frequency on the screen. We'll do the background. Oh, so you want you want to see what happens when when we change the uh, the power yeah. mode, um, right? Yeah. Uh, probably try and put that the, the window behind. Uh, you might want to move the PC manager. Oh look, PC Manager actually has a wattage. It's got the wattage of the CPU. Yeah, is that the? Oh yeah, it's just the. That's the package power right there. Yeah, um, well, that's new because normally they don't do that. I I feel like you're watching your videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I, I'm not really familiar with PC Manager, actually, because I've never used this more than like two hours at a time. I, I sometimes, so the reason I use this two hours instead of zero hours is because, or rather um, five minutes, to be honest, is because sometimes um, I unplug my battery and then the setting here uh, gets reset because the CMOS uh, of the BIOS gets reset. And this setting is the keyboard backlight timeout. And um, this setting only appeared uh, since the 2019 model, whereas the 20, uh, 2018 model uh, only has the default value of uh, timing out the keyboard backlight in 15 seconds. So um, a lot of these seem to be uh, indeed uh, EC related features. Um, the keyboard backlight is definitely one of those. Now I, I do notice the CPU frequency changing. So I think I think it's changing a little bit. It might be changing a little bit. I'm not so sure. Well, actually, no. Uh, the way you want to be viewing this is just sort of maybe like just move your mouse. If you're actually, it's not really something. changing all that much. Oh, yeah, because we're not putting really any load on it, right? We're not loading the CPU yeah. at all, so it's sort of just, you know, doing that. Yeah. Normally, what I usually do is I just open something to give it like a first load. Yeah. I didn't really want to, I didn't really want to, um, load in all of my software before, like, reinstalling the system, but I guess we'll do that now. Um, so I've so, got well, um, maybe like you don't have to load all of it in. Yeah, but I would say Prime ninety five. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Oh, you have it. You have it on. I've, I've, this is my Windows to go um, disc. I might boot into this disc at some point in this live stream, but um, I do have um, I do have apps loaded onto here. So yeah, that'd be nice. Okay. Uh, it's uh, I guess it takes a while to access. Uh, Locked um, user folder. I don't even know if we can get in. Anyway, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, do you guys want to see this, or do you guys want to like move on to like a teardown? Because uh, I don't, I don't. I, honestly, in I my opinion, nice I have, really uh, don't. Baseline. Thing, yeah. Though. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that then. So like, okay. So yeah. Um, so I've opened up Microsoft Edge. This is the uh, legacy version of Microsoft Edge. And we see that the uh, default search engine, the, uh, the homepage actually is set to Baidu, which is um, pretty pretty well localized to China. Everybody uses Baidu there because Google's not available. Um, so I guess we'll download, first go to Google and download Prime95 to stress the CPU. Can, can we also get a, what is that called? Uh, what's it called? Is it called HWID or what is it called? Yeah, hardware info. Yes, hardware info. Oh, you know what? I'm actually, I'm, I've got into my, uh, my drive, so I can just, okay, uh, I think, I think they've been synced to, to local. Because I usually store these in my OneDrive. Like whenever I log in with my Microsoft account, all of these will appear. But I don't. I kind of don't want to log into my Microsoft account on this machine right now. Um, not because I'm paranoid about like spyware or anything. I don't. I don't have that much worthy of spying on. But um, just because I don't know. I don't want it messing with my shit. Like as in Microsoft messing with my shit on, on a on a OS distribution that I don't intend on using. So okay, let's launch HW Info. HW info, I guess, is not localized to Chinese. Uh, we'll run the sensors menu. I think we also have uh, Prime 95 over here. So let's run that as well. Um, I've not yet initialized it. And we can also run Furmark. Uh, actually, before we uh, run Prime 95, let's uh, head into HW info for a moment. Yeah, it's still loading up. I'm just like opening up the, the oh, softwares. Okay. Um, so wh while while that software is loading up, we uh, I can talk about some some of the conversations in the chat. So um, can you go a little bit into the panel self refresh stuff? So panel self refresh is uh, basically a variable variable refresh rate kind of implementation um, where the, the panel uh, asks for new frames uh, from the GPU, the integrated GPU, and the GPU delivers frames on demand instead of having a constant, you know, 60 hertz refresh rate. Normally that, that would, you know, that's very um, clever. So let, let's say if you're just idling on the desktop and the only thing that's moving is let's say a 
I don't know, one, one of these uh, monitors, right? The, this page is refreshing once every two seconds. That means your refresh rate is 0 0.5 hertz, which theoretically could be very battery saving. However, Huawei's implementation of panel self-refresh has always been broken, actually. And uh, you, I don't know if you can, you can see that well on, on the video, but we're definitely not at 60 FPS right now. Um, there's a whole lot of stutter, and, and it doesn't matter you know, how, how fast you boost your CPU to, or even if you set the GPU to high performance mode, it'll always have this kind of um, stutter uh, just because of the implementation is wrong. I'm not a software engineer. I'm a mechanical engineering student. Um, so I don't know what's, what's going on in the inside um, um, or, or electrical on the electrical side of things, um, you know, digital electronics and stuff like that. Um, Larry, are do you, we talking do you, about panel self uh, yeah. refresh? Do, do you have any, any insights into like why panel self refresh is, is broken? Broken. Yeah, it uh, it just doesn't work. It brings it is bring it brings down your FPS like crazy, uh, and it doesn't happen on other laptops. It just happens with the um, Huawei MateBook X Pro. I don't know if it happens on the MateBook Thirteen. Yeah. It really sounds like a panel self refresh is not a very um, well actually the the way it's panel self refresh isn't supposed to do anything. I mean, there's lots of stuff changing on the screen. Basically, the main idea behind panel self-refresh is that LCD panels require refreshing. It's like DRAM. If you power them off or you don't update them, they'll fade. So the panel needs to be you know, constantly updated. Um, panel self-refresh is about the panel itself having a buffer to store current contents of the screen. So if there's nothing going on, it can just keep that static change going so that your CPU and GPU can go to sleep and not send anything. Of course, um, if you know, it's being too aggressive with that, and it's not refreshing when it should be, that could <laughs> cause you to stutter. Yeah, that's right, and that's what we're seeing. So um, I, I noticed something interesting in HW Info right now. So this uh, is the default PL1 and PL2 power limits. And we see that PL2 is 51 watts, which is great, but PL1 is actually 12 watts, which is below the TDP of this i7-1071 zero u so okay. this means that 51 watts. yeah pl2 so That's 51 watt burst i don't know if it'll it, it, it'll probably What's you know time? reach thermal throttling um it, it's usually 28 watts i don't think hw info shows that to you right now um throttle stop does show that to you and we can launch that in a second but um this is this is great i think i've, I've seen 51 watts all over the place i've seen it on the xps 13 2 and one uh 2019 model and I've also seen it on, I believe, I forget, but the, a, a lot of laptops have 50, 51 as a default. That's reasonable. What is important here is that this means they're confident in their voltage regulation cooling. Yes. So this is this is um, a great opportunity for us when we mod this shit. And now, of course, 12 watt PL1 is really Yeah. The, you know what? This, this, I think, this is like borderline class action lawsuit material. Okay. Can you, can, <laughs> can you, can you do something really quick? Can we, uh, get, what's, what's PC manager set to? So, let me set, oh, you know what? Now, uh, now when we are in performance mode, we set it to, uh, now it's at 18 watts. Okay. So, so, hmm. Hmm, okay, let's, uh, this let's is. Let's try balance. Let's try balance. Okay, I'm in balance now. Um, I don't see any, any difference. Yeah, it's still at 18 watts. So it's 18 watts between um, performance and balanced. Okay, so correction, we, we do not require a class la action lawsuit. <laughs> um, because, if, if, I mean, what? if they actually provide only 12 watts as opposed to 15 watts that is advertised by the implication of the Intel i7, then... This is not bad. Yeah, I mean, it's not great either. The uh, XPS 13 2-in-1, I believe, has a 25-watt PL1 by default. And so does the uh, Razor Blade Stealth. And both of those are, are pretty pretty uh, pretty legit powerhouses when it comes to 13 inch class laptops. Um, I just uh, finished testing, um, not very in depth. I didn't take it apart, but I did test the Dell XPS 13 2 in one with the vapor chamber cooling, and I'll have a couple of videos on uh, on my channel very soon after I get this computer set up. So this is actually kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, if we if we go into read write everything uh, or RW everything, we can probably see one of the EC registers changing as we 
uh, switch the different power modes, right? I'm curious if they're changing EC or if they are just writing to the CPU. Right, that's a that's an interesting question. But I think it's not interesting enough for me to uh, dive more into this because I really don't uh, intend on intend to use uh, PC Manager extensively at all. Um, I might install it every once in a while to, to check stuff, but uh, I usually just you know uh, get all the updates, uh, driver updates from Windows updates, and they seem to be pretty recent uh, and up to date. So I don't really need this, and I don't use uh, battery protection. I, I sort of just I mean I look at me. I have got like three computers in, in three years. Um, I, I go through computers really quickly, and that's I mean that's like really non uh, eco friendly. Um, I'm sorry, but um, that means I I don't like care about like you know long term battery longevity all that much to so, be fair um for, for these are i think we should take a moment um okay now i'm gonna get hate for this but we should take a moment and appreciate that the manufacturer has given us this many options just like speaking from like an average user's point of view you know you know just the like you know having like a consumer grade machine with all these controls that are actually able to you know affect hardware settings you know giving people the wattage of the processor you know letting people set it up to 18 watts you know these are actually pretty good compromises you know Huawei is very serious about delivering sort of some some form of power user features and I think it's a pretty good balance yeah I think um yeah, because because there's like there, there's a whole lot of different philosophies, right? Um, you have you have this like very kitchen sink philosophy, like just give the user everything, and expose you know more features than you need. Like honestly, why do you need a driver update uh, software when you can just deli- you can just deliver the drivers automatically through Microsoft's channel, right? Because that's already a first party feature. That's straight up from Microsoft. Um, so, you know, and, and it happens automatically, yeah. seamlessly. It's integrated into Windows. You don't really need to do anything uh, on the user's part. Whereas they implemented instead this uh, proprietary driver update channel that the user has to kind of either check manually or set up notifications uh, and to then go apply a driver updates. Totally fair. I think in China there are versions of Windows that don't have Windows updates. Oh, okay, yeah. Notably, I guess I've been gone the, from China for too long to know about a, this stuff. There is a version of Windows 10 now in China for Chinese government. Yeah, that's right. Windows 10 G. Mm, um, I okay. know that has a different model. Yeah, 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 definitely. That, oh, you know what? That probably has less uh, That probably has less Microsoft spying features. <laughs> less well, telemetry. Yes, um, <laughs> yes, apparently it is uh, pretty clean. Now, um, to be fair, yeah. But they so, don't have Candy I Crush. The thing about software in China is it's a totally different ecosystem. Yeah. It's really different from what you see here in the West. Um, I think the reason why things like PC Manager and whatnot exist is it's part of the fact that in China, I think part of it is you have to deliver more of that ecosystem yourself as an OEM. Right. Um, you, you, you rely on platforms a lot less. That's because, you know, we don't have Google Android. We, have, we just have Android. Yeah. Wait, did so I? That's Hold on. Why is the CPU design. Why is the CPU four cores? Did I buy the wrong freaking CPU? Uh, you have the 10, 5, 10, by the way. Yeah, I might have bought the wrong freaking CPU. Not the 10, 7, 10. Okay, if I, if I have the wrong CPU, then I'll just, I guess... <laughs> I think you do have the wrong CPU, because you, oh. you said you had the 10, 7, 10. That's hmm. six cores. You have hmm. the ten, five, ten. That's hmm. Five, ten. Hmm. Let me let me take a look. Let me take a look. Okay, this this is this would be an extreme, uh, extremely bad oversight. Okay. Yes. Uh, I I have Intel's uh, information pulled up. You do have the wrong processor. I saw it on the box. Yeah. So I mean, they 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 list both of these as i sevens. So. Um, I thought it was just the same i7. Um, let me see if like there's... Okay, that is first generation graphics on their official store. That is way outdated. Uh, that tells me nothing. Um, let me look back in here on, on the specs maybe. Um, oops. Oh, I accidentally clicked that. Restore these pages. Uh, MateBook X Pro. They, I guess they, they don't have the six core version or 
or do they? I, I, I don't know. Um, let me see the specifications here. I mean, it w would make sense for them to go with four cores, actually. Ah, uh, this is the first generation. God damn it, why don't, why don't you... Okay, 2020, let's go. Actually, it would I, probably make more sense to, you know... Yeah, it's, it's four cores. I'm sorry, it's four cores. Um, so I thought it was going to be six cores, like the, uh, the XPS 13 7390, uh, non-2-in-1, uh, that was released in, I think, late 2019 or so. Uh, and it actually had the uh, 10, 7, 10 U with, uh, with six cores and a really low base clock. But what we're seeing here is this is literally the same thing as the uh, 8565U. So in terms of performance, these two would be really, really similar because the, bla the base clocks is the same, right? So, and the IPC between the, IP there's, no, there's no IPC difference. Um, there's no IPC difference. Um, between the uh, 8565U and the 10510U, I think. Because they're both based on uh, the uh, 14 nanometer plus plus. Um, and then, and you, so you would also expect about the same performance per watt. Uh, now, what's interesting here, though, is that the turbo goes up to 4.9 gigahertz. Um, so... Let me, so one great resource that I like to use is, uh, is this website called Wikichip. And it, um, the reason it's better than Intel Arc, uh, Intel's website for, for their chips, is that um, it shows your, your all-core turbos um, in, in addition to just the single-core turbos that are, that's shown on Intel's website. Um, I, guess, I guess Wikichip hasn't included this uh, chip this particular chip in its um, in its uh, wiki yet, but you see max turbo frequency. This is only when it's um, when one core is stressed. So you know what? Since wiki chip doesn't have that right now, let's find out uh, that uh, ourselves. So let's see if we go into you know the 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 reason I started suspecting like, like wait wait a second what's wrong here is because I, I was launching. I was launching um, Prime 95, right? And uh, I saw Prime 95 default to eight threads, and I was like, shouldn't this be 12? <laughs> and uh, I guess I guess it is uh, eight threads now. And uh, yeah, Task Manager confirms this. Okay, so so as we um, start Prime 95 stress test, so if you guys don't know, Prime 95 is a really good uh, CPU stress testing software that uh, really puts a lot of heat on your CPU. Um, and then if you if you couple that with Fermark, which stresses your CPU, you'll get a whole lot of power out of out of your computer, and it really shows the upper limits of your cooling system. By so the way, we do notice that um, HW Info says the maximum CPU temperature is ninety six degrees. Oh, that's interesting because that tells me um, the uh, clock hot signal might have been raised from ninety or ninety one. Uh, I think it was ninety on the. Um, yeah, see the, the proc hot right there. Can I zoom in? Oh, I can zoom in on here. That's cool. Uh, not zooming in on YouTube suggestions. Uh, but uh, processor hot 90 degrees on the 2019 model. I think it was 95 degrees on the 2018 model. The hotter you allow your CPU to run, the more wattage you can get out of that. Um, I have a video coming up um, based on the SPS 13 that explains the, uh, the thermodynamics and the heat transfer uh, phenomenon behind that um, using the thermal resistance equation. Basically, the, the more temperature difference, the more heat transfer. Um, that, that's the, the easiest way to put it. So, so if it's able, you know, a, a lot of, uh, don't a lot of MacBooks go up to like 103 degrees or something like that? Mine went up to 105. <laughs> that's crazy, because like TJ Maxx is 100. Yes, um, so it's bouncing off the limit. Yeah. And when we say TJ Maxx, we're not talking about, you know, where you, where you go shop for, for clothes and whatever. Um, we're talking about uh, the thermal junction temperature, the, the, the temperature of the junction max. <laughs> um, okay, so without further ado, let's start. Um, let's let's uh, pay, pay close attention to the uh, CPU. Freq I'll, I'll load up these, uh, these charts here, actually. So I'm going to load up the, um, the core clocks, I guess. Um,
Uh, by the way, are you guys hearing a lot of noise from my microphone? Uh, my, uh, uh, someone, someone replied in the chat. Okay. Uh, okay. Some people are saying off. Oh, fine. Okay, great. Uh, apparently my mom's watching the stream and she just came into the room saying there's, there's microphone noise. So I don't know what's going on with that. I guess if you guys are hearing it fine, then we can continue. Um, <laughs> yep. It's, it's it's probably my uh, my stand uh, for for my phone, so I'll avoid avoid moving my phone uh, stand, my, my little tripod for my phone. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of like wobbling on my table, and it sounds kind of conducting into my phone, I guess. Okay, so uh, what we want you guys to 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 watch out for as as we witness this together um, is the uh, temperature. CPU package. So the CPU, interesting. So where did you where did you see the? Uh, okay, so this is hmm, this is really weird because this sensor is telling us it has gone up to ninety six degrees before, but these sensors don't. Uh, the highest cores that uh, the highest uh, core temperatures that these cores experienced was ninety degrees, and then the CPU package here is ninety one degrees. So it tells me that I think. Probably, most likely, um, I, I don't see any reason for them to raise the uh, clock hot uh, thermal throttling threshold temperature. It's probably still at 90 degrees. But um, let's let's do a stress test anyway and see what happens. So we'll start off with uh, with Prime 95. So that stresses only the CPU and I think the cache and I think some of the RAM as well. It's mostly a CPU intensive computation. And so you see that uh, the maximum temperature is 90. Uh, wait, DTS. What the hell is that? Barry, you know what DTS is? Control temperature sensor. Okay. Um, I wonder why that it's like, why, why it's, uh, oh, okay. Okay, so interesting. Yeah, it's just, like, there's a CPU package here, and then there's a CPU package here. They don't vary that much. Um, it might just be. Yeah, we're, we're we're hitting power limits right now. Yeah, that's right. So the the reason the reason Larry was able to tell um, we're hitting power limits is uh, because we have uh, well one thing one way you can tell is uh, power limit exceeded here. It's saying yes, but also another clue is that you have really low temperatures even when you're running Prime ninety five, and that's that means you're rate wasting uh, thermal headroom on your CPU chip. Um, because something else is limiting the system. So let's see what our power limit has gone to. So this is interesting because PL1 has gone down from 18 to 17. Uh, I think what's happening here is Intel DPTF and now it's 16.75. So it's continuously adjusting the power limit. And this is probably due to Intel DPTF. Um, I have a couple of... Uh, of articles on my blog, brasshacks.com, on how to defeat Intel DBTF. There used to be a much more complicated method involving either the registry or group policy met, uh, group policy editor. But now, um, ever since I think late 2019, Throttle Stop has implemented a really simple switch to just turn it off and override DBTF. So you don't even, you don't even have to mess with that. You can just uh, flip it off. Um, can you quickly uh, scroll through all the sensors to see if you can find the voltage regulated temperature yeah let's see if we have that so pch temperature is kind of low a yeah, few degrees over no, no, no. yeah um so i know the uh, wait so that's a gpu gpu's not being stressed right now battery not here drive so the drive is a j micron whatever not relevant <laughs> No, wait. Just kidding. That that's my that's my freaking um, external drive right there. The drive is a Samsung. Um, that's cool. Um, I guess this is like a PM nine eight one or something like that. So like the equivalent of a nine seventy Evo, most likely. Um, I don't think we have VRM temperature sensors exposed to the operating system. Yeah, and this has been the 
same case for the previous two generations of the X Pro as well. No VRM temperature sensors. It's all just guesswork. Um, the temperature sensor is basically uh, remove power limits. Uh, if your computer shuts down, then decrease your, your power limits. <laughs> uh, Reinstigate power limits. Reinstate power limits, you know. So uh, let's, let's add some more to this. Why don't we start a fur oh, mine? Percentage is the battery test. test. Percentage, oh, good question, because if the battery is low, then perhaps you could have, um, you could have. Oh, that's fine. Uh, you can have power limit th uh, throttling under low battery. Oh, uh, and uh, wait, power. which uh, which power option are we on right now? Oh, we're at performance. Okay, that's good. That's that's the correct one for for the stress test. So this we're just kind of seeing like how can how well can this computer perform in its stock state without installing any like software tweaks or you know uh, any physical mods. Um, just out of the box, you know, all we've everything that we've changed in here are inc are from included software. Oh, you know what? The fan noise, Larry. The fan noise is so different. the the fan The fan noise is like, it's. Oh my God! The, I like the fan noise. The fan noise is lower um, frequency than, so so the twenty nineteen is lower frequency than the twenty eighteen, and then the twenty twenty is like. Lower yet, lower still. So I, I wonder, you know, what's going on here? Because um, they might have, they might have changed, modified the fan uh, slightly, and then you know, uh, I, I it's still a single fan for sure. Um, there's only a single exhaust, but it sounds a little different. So that might just me be that might just be me tripping, um, <laughs> and and hearing things that are not there. But it sounds pretty pleasant. It definitely sounds a whole lot better than. Um, the 2018, our, it's pretty close. Our core clocks, core clocks are down to, down to 700 megahertz. Hmm. Oh, look. Look at, look at power limit one. It's at six watts. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, so so we've lost a lot of performance. That Fermark was running fine a, a moment ago. And now, now it's slowed down. Yeah, so we got, we, we got VRM uh, throttling. Um, not necessarily VRM. Oh, well, VRM related oh, throttling, DPTF. probably. Yeah, so DPTF, I think it... Do you know if DPTF uh, references any VRM temperatures, or does it just kind of predict stuff? DPTF... Here's the thing. There, it depends on the platform. There are a lot of sensors. Yeah. I do know that VRM temperature sensing is part of the Intel specification for both the Right. Let this me launch GPU-Z like, for a second and see... And just make sure that the... MX250 in here is the, um, what was it? Let me, you know, often I refer I back to, I, ref, I refer back to my uh, previous uh, articles that I've written down for, for record because I don't remember every, everything. So I'm just scrolling on my TV screen right now to see what the code or the model code was. Um, the de device ID. Okay, so 1D52. Wait. If it's a device ID, is that the same thing as a hardware ID in the... No, probably not, because this is GPU specific. Now, uh, let's see. So this is Intel UHD graphics, UHD 620. I think it's... Right? UHD 620. Yeah. Hasn't changed in, like, ever since, uh, what? Haswell 2013? Because that was called the HD 620. I don't think the UHD 620 is any different than the HD 620. It's just a different name. So what I'm trying to do here is uh, I'm trying to access the, I guess I have to turn off this thing because I mean it's really slowing down. Uh, let me just like stop our. Uh, oh okay now we now we got it okay so let's see MX250 1D52 so that is still the 10 watt version I know that's one of the big questions um, that uh, people have like is it the 10 watt 25 watt uh, version so it is of the course. 10 watt. With the 10 watt, uh, with the GPU, you know, power, uh, we do see the CPU being throttled. Yeah, this, I mean, th yeah, this so is, this is not too great, to be honest. What um, you have to keep in mind is that uh, your 
CPU was at 6 watts and 80 something degrees. Yeah. So this is going to limit the amount of uh, headroom you have. I, I wonder what's going on, you know? Like, uh, the, the this seems not to be a whole lot worse than the last generation. So I wonder if, like, you know, the thermal paste is misapplied or <laughs> at this point, this is not normal. Now, what I will say is um, the thermal profiles, based on the way it heats up and cools down, uh, I think the thermal contact point is simply, uh, there is some thermal mass to it. So what I feel like is there's just some limit on the amount of heat you can get out of that. Yeah. So... Thermal mass, actually, um, I used to think about thermal mass a lot, but thermal mass turns out it, it has basically no um, no significance when you're talking about steady states at all. Like uh, in the in the heat equation, um, when when you when you do steady state, there's no there's no none of the variables are changing with respect to time. The thermal mass term actually cancels out and goes to zero, and so thermal mass has has no uh, no significance when we're testing steady state. Um, thermal mass does matter when you're talking about um, convection. So if you have, if you have um, hot water flowing through a pipe, right, there's, there's mass transport and every, it's kind of like a, think about like an In-N-Out drive-through, right? Or a, you know, like a McDonald's drive-through. Every, every molecule of, uh, of liquid is going through that pipe and getting heated up. And so thermal mass does matter because it determines, you know, because it's always moving. Uh, every particular uh, elements of the fluid is is getting heated up one after another. So thermal mass actually doesn't really help. Um, thermal mass in a laptop is, is, I would say, bad design because it only helps the very transient states. And then during regular usage, you would actually model that as a average power output. Um, sort of like how you have like RMS uh, current or RMS voltage in electronics. You have um, an average power output um, averaged over the, your entire usage because you're, you're never going to just like heat up the computer once and then shut it down for good, you know. So um, right now, you know, I'm not very impressed with the performance. The CPU is at 6 watts. That's absolutely abysmal. Um, one last thing that we want to do before we go ahead and tear this thing down and see if there's something wrong with the... Um, either the design or the execution is I want to launch throttle stop and and see um, do I have a copy of throttle stop in here I, I don't think so the throttle stop creates a configuration for each creates a configuration file for by the way Larry are, are you hearing a, a like a kind of doo doo kind of noise over there oh, I'm sorry about that Problem. So throttle stop. We're gonna download that. Throttle stop. So if you guys don't know throttle stop, it's it's one of the most wonderful softwares to ever grace the uh, Intel Windows laptop user base. Um, created by the lovely Uncle Web. Uh, you can find them on Reddit. Find them on uh, Notebook Review. Um, and it basically. You use it to undervolt. You also use it to tweak your power limits. It's great. You do a lot of things with it. You can even use it to uh, create custom profiles that uh, that allow your computer to be more uh, energy efficient. So let's okay. We've downloaded that. Let's um, man. I'm really bad at talking and doing things at the same time. Gonna extract that. Run throttle stop. Oh, by the way, I almost forgot. Um, I can't run this until I install the correct Visual C++. And by the way, I should probably stop my Prime 95 because it's really slowing me down. But um, every time I set up a new laptop, I just go to my own laptop speed tweaks page. Because I don't remember stuff, and I just kind of follow through my own guide again, and uh, reconfigure everything to my liking. And I highly recommend this guide. Take from it um, in some some 
useful recommendations. Some of these might, uh, might be useful for, for your use case. So we need to install the Visual C++ distributable, both the 64 and 86 versions, or 64 and 32-bit versions. Let's install both of them. Whoops, starting from the 60, starting from the 86 version. Install. Set successful. Install. After that, we should be able to launch Throttle Stop. Uh, smart Screen has blocked it, so you just click um, more info or whatever it would appear in English. So run anyway. Oh my god, all these prompts, I disable them all, all the time. I disable smart screen, user account control, all that stuff. Okay, now we're in throttle stop. Now the first thing we want to do is uh, go into the fiber menu and install the... I'm really sorry about that. Stop goofing around, Larry! <laughs> no, I just, uh, I just uh, put the phone on the mic stand. Oh, okay, that's cool. Uh, what the hell is happening here? Oh, okay. I've never seen Chinese Mega before. This is cool. I guess Mega draws from your system configuration language. System language. So this is the driver, the DLL file, that uh, that sort of enables the, uh, the read-write func functionality to, I believe, one of the uh, specific CPU registers, I think. And that enables you to go in here and the install button no longer is there. And you can disable the lock power limits. And then, um, and then we can go into this and you can see that the um, Turbo Boost Long Power Max is set to default 18. Uh, and we can try maybe Oh, you know what, Larry? I, I'm, I think this is CPU registers. The, the implementation of the TPL is, is in the CPU register instead of the EC because uh, normally EC, you don't, like, it actually doesn't show up in the PL1 and PL2 because on the Razor Blade, um, after I used Throttle Stop and, it's, uh, and these two things actually disappeared, it continued to throttle at 25 watts and it didn't oh. show up in HW Info anyway uh, at, at all. And uh, it was just kind of like this ghost throttling phenomenon happening. So yeah, it's probably it's probably done in the in the usual way, not in the super cringy way, which I definitely definitely uh, like because if it is in the EC, then we got we got problems because this um, this BIOS is the inside BIOS instead of the what was it the uh, AMI right. Um, Right, the AMI BIOS that uh, that the razor blade uses, and so there's no BIOS unlock method uh, readily available for this. So if it is in the EC, then we have very little chance of of kind of fooling the the EC and stuff like that using the BIOS. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go right into this and um, set the set both of these to like, or I'll, I'm just going to straight up disable the short power. Um, which is PL2, and I'm going to set the PL1 to, let's say, 50 watts. That's going to be well beyond our actual thermal limitations. So <clears throat> now let's run a stress test to... Uh, oh, is fir has Firmark been running the whole time? <laughs> That's funny. Okay. So, um, where was that earlier? Prime 95 again. Let's run this again. See if we get better performance out of it. Um, guys, if you guys don't know right uh, already, the reason we use um, the reason we use Prime 90. Uh, sorry, the reason we use um, like these uh, like this combination of uh, yeah Prime 95 and Firmark and and using HW Info to monitor the package power. Uh, instead of using benchmark points, is that we basically are able to separate the entire software out of the equation. So it doesn't really matter what software we're running or like you know what version of Windows or what even what uh, what voltage your CPU is running at. 
all that matters to the cooling system is the amount of watts, the amount of heat power that's coming out. So let's see, the package power has risen to 17, okay, 18 watts. It's still changing dynamically. So I'm suspecting, um, I'm suspecting a little bit more overreach from DPTF in this computer. No, that's, no, that's incorrect. Uh, that's incorrect. Let's see. The reason for our low performance right now is actually the CPU temperature. You seeing this, Larry? This one? CPU temperature. Oh. So we're actually, um, so, so now we're seeing the true performance limit of the heat sink. And, um, yeah, about 18 you know watts. So they made a pretty accurate estimate of, you know, a pretty worst case scenario. Uh, to kind of base their default PL1 off of. And I think the ambient temperature in this room is about uh, 29 degrees, 28 degrees. Um, my my uh, computers have been really heating up this room. <laughs> so it's not, not a great situation to be in. But yeah, in terms of the, the cooling um, power of this laptop, I'm not very impressed. I'm not. Um, I was, uh, you know, if you look back at a, at uh, my 2019 live stream, I was initially quite impressed with the uh, stock cooling capacity of the 2019 model compared to the 2018 model, which throttled egregiously to 10 watts, uh, but that was because of DPTF and um, or whatever, power limit throttling. But here we're getting 6 watts, so I guess this is even worse. So I think somehow, maybe it's just my unit, maybe it's just a fluke, uh, but somehow, Huawei has managed to become worse, um, become worse than the previous generation. That's pretty disappointing. So I'm not, I'm, I don't have high expectations for, for when we open this up. I don't think there's going to be that much interesting stuff uh, that's changed in this generation. But we'll see anyway. Okay. Anything else that, uh, that we should look at, Larry? I think that's about good for now. I think I think we're running up against limits. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's let's tear this down. I think this is a lot yeah, of uh, what a lot of you guys are here for. So let me close everything. And um, for those of you who are wondering about the um, driver installation process, I'm going to figure that out off stream. Um, I'm not going to take all of your time on this because. Um, a lot of that requires continuous updates, so I'm going to write a blog post about that or something. Um, and it's asking me to update. I kind of don't want to do sy uh, s system updates right now, so I'm just going to force this to shut down to circumvent that. Wow, this is really hot right now. Uh, you might want to check your exposure on yeah, it's it's uh it's pretty uh, high exposure right now, right? Because the the black screen. Oh, you know what? Um, so so how about this? We're gonna do the teardown first, and then we're gonna put it all back together, and then after we put it back together, we're going to boot it up again, but this time using the um, Windows Live USB. So it's created from a Windows to go um, software. So the Windows is running from here. Uh, I've got my portable apps and everything, my testing suite going from there. So um, that kind of represents like a clean install of, of Windows where everything just kind of naturally comes in through Windows Update. And um, I mean, I do have some remnants of drivers from the 2019 MateBook X Pro, but it's, uh, I think it should give a pretty accurate representation of what a Windows install would be like. But I guess like we, I, I have, I've got time, you know, um, classes are online now, I can watch them, I can watch the recordings afterwards, so, um, for those of you that kind of want to stick around, um, I guess we can do that, because why not, you know, just, it's just me and Larry and all of you guys hanging out, so, it's great. Let's see, sorry about the tripod noise again. Like this, I should probably have you know some uh, some ESD protection.
because I'm on, I'm on carpet, I want to set a good example for you guys. This is for your computer's safety, not necessarily not not necessarily for yours, because make sure you uh, use a wireless ESD disk drive. Uh, it's the latest innovation. In <laughs> the Verge. Uh, yeah. So so you um you hook this up to some some uh, metallic objects. So I'm gonna use my big hunk of. Where's my big hunk of aluminum and heat sink? Uh, I don't have it with me right now. I guess I'll hook it up to my laptop stand, which is steel. It's not the most conductive thing ever, but it'll work. Okay. So, let's get started on the actual teardown. We're at one and a half hours into the stream. Sorry about the... Uh, Technical way, issues and tip, whatnot. If you actually want to find a place to clip your ESD wrist strap to, yeah. uh, if you cannot find an actual good ground, you can actually clip your ESD wrist, wrist strap to the chassis ground of the device you're working on. Right, right. Because what you're concerned about is not relative potential, but rather you're concerned about... Potential difference. Well, you, well you're, yeah, you're, you're concerned about relative potential, not absolute. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and there, there's no there's no saying in uh, in how uh, how the potential is gonna be what the potential will be at um, on my steel laptop stand. Uh, so clipping it to the actual um, ground of the chassis would be a better idea. Um, you can clip it to your eGPU if you have like a power supply. Or something like that. Right, eGPU is kind of kind of low down. Um, okay. Yeah. I, I used to have I used to have like literally a. Um, extension cord to this where I'll clip this to the extension cord and the extension cord has like this one round uh, ground pin connector that uh, I stick into the wall yeah. so I'm literally grounded um, but I, I think that one broke so I'm just gonna clip anyway, it to the let's, uh, let's not delay the stream let's see we've uh, lost a lot of viewers yeah uh, for the, the 15 of you who are still watching um, thank you for, for tuning in really appreciate the support And uh, as always, if you have any questions that, or any things that you would like to chat about with me, shoot them in the chat, and uh, Larry will uh, announce those topics to us, and we can talk about them. Keep the questions coming so that we have something to to entertain entertain ourselves while I laboriously turn these screws. Alright, focus. Oh boy, YouTube YouTube's app is really bad. Oh boy. I think now it's good. At some point I'm gonna get an actual like So, um, streaming-wise, you can get pretty far with a mirrorless camera and a cam link. There's a lot of really good equipment out there. Uh, someone in the chat says, I have the 2018 MateBook X Pro i7 model, and it's getting quite hot, it's quite hot while it's charging. Anyone who experienced something similar? Um, off the top of my head, I remember on the 2018, charging apparently did throttle the CPU. So, heat from charging does appear to be a thing about it. So. Anything Brad can add to that? Yeah, so that's one of the best known issues of the MateBook X Pro, especially the 2018 version. I believe they changed some of the uh, components, uh, some of the components in the charging circuit of the since the 2019 model. 
And from my experience, the 2019 model seems to be better in um, charging while hot. It has, uh, the 2018 was really, really bad uh, in, um, at least in its stock configuration. I, I mostly fixed it with my mods, which you can check out on bradshacks.com, by the way. It was really bad with charging. Whenever you have it plugged in and it's charging, the charging would actually get throttled whenever you have a significant load on the CPU and GPU. Okay, first time is always the hardest to get these back covers off. Um, my uh, 2019 Matebook has already gotten to the point where it requires basically nothing at all to, to kind of crack open. Let's see if I can have a stronger tool to use here. Um, I know that, okay, so we got one corner out. This is like really firm. So it's sort of like the Touch Bar MacBook Pros. Yeah, yeah. And don't for those ones, don't you have to slide? Um. Yes, you have to pull up first and then slide. It. It's clipped on the back. Right. I don't think this one is the the sliding type because the back cover is just like the last generation. Back cover is uh, actually kind of. Uh, indented into the rest of the surroundings so it doesn't it's not able to slide just because of geometry wow this is really tight tolerancing <laughs> and of course you can see the same display cables in the hinge added like any more clips or tabs you know because this okay there we go we got it off so same deal all the same um, same foam pads on the back cover okay now we see this the fan is the same as the 2019 model um, but it, you know there's, I feel like there's quite a bit of um, manufacturing variance between either either in the assembly assembly stage or in the stamping stage or something, but um, or it might just be you know placebo. But often I, I, I could hear different um, different sounds or different timbres of the the, the fan um, on the same model. Like when I had the twenty nine, when, when I had the twenty eighteen. Check the uh, OEM of the fan. Yeah, it is the same. Um, same, same exact fan, so if it is, then it's the uh, AVC. Okay. Um, but I guess m maybe they could send the same design to a different uh, manufacturer, right? Yes. That could, that's, um, that's a possibility. Most, uh, I think uh, Dell uses, uh, for example, they use uh, FCN, um, Sunon, and, uh, what's it? and AVC. So... And for, for the different fans, actually, the motor can be different. Well, usually look the same. Right. So uh, hold on just one second while I grab a sip of water. Uh, in the meantime, take a, take a close look at what you what you have on the screen. Oh crap! I'm out of water. Okay, my wrist got back on. So what we what we see here is basically the exact same. The exact same internal design as the 2019 model. We have the same rubber seal, foam seal actually, over here. Same exact shape, same exact heatsink design with the perforated holes um, above the VRM and RAM regions. We have uh, the same battery, so uh, 7.6 volts, um, 7.33 amp hours. 
pretty sure that is uh so it's 56 watt hours same exact battery um it's uh it's either 2s2p or 2p2s i'm not too sure and then same speakers uh same rubber or rather foam seal around the speaker driver uh, there seems to be a bit of a give to these speakers so it provides a little bit of vibrational isolation from the rest of the chassis which is definitely really important because the first generation my first 2018 Matebrook X Pro had um, had insane speaker clacking sounds at around 500 Hertz and that was because the speaker was literally just bouncing against the chassis and uh, I made a I made a post uh, I ended up putting in foam some of you might have seen that on my blog I ended up putting up that foam under the speakers and that kind of solved it uh, and uh, removing these foam seals also solved it, and they also uh, tamed the treble quite a bit, or rather the high mids, so it actually sounded more pleasant without these seals. Um, and then a few months later, Huawei basically did a uh, it design change or like a production change in the middle of their production run of the 2018 model and added the foam uh, pads, or the kind of like the, the spongy pads under the speakers. Okay. So everything right here so far is looking exactly the same. Uh, one of the things that we forgot to check, Larry, uh, is the touchpad, uh, the uh, touchpad stiffness. So it's one of one of the other iconic quirks of the MateBook X Pro, which is you know the, the loose trackpad. So far, I'm not detecting any um, any touchpad wobble or looseness. They might have improved it a little bit. Uh, they might have tightened their uh, their manufacturing tolerances. But um, you know, just because it doesn't appear right away doesn't mean it doesn't have it. Okay, because it could still appear depending on the warping of your chassis. If your chassis is not sitting flat, chances are it's it's going to tighten up your touchpad, which is really weird. But you know, it's uh, it's just geometry. So we're going to go ahead and, hmm? no, the speakers are still the same size. You see a lot of, uh, you see a lot of changes here. So yeah, th there's literally no change. <laughs> um, there's, there's less, there is, um, like in terms of, in, you know, if you're comparing 2020 versus 2019 and the 2019 versus 2018, 2018 and 2018 are now like worlds apart uh, comparing to this. So, um, yeah, so this is basically the 2019 version. There's literally no difference. Um, there's no six cores. There's only four cores. It's still 14 nanometer. It's still a UHD 620 paired with an MX250 instead of an MX350, even though that doesn't make a difference either. So, is it, I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's literally the MateBook X Pro 2019 all over again, except the CPU name is different. Uh, that's, that, that's what we're seeing right now. Nevertheless, let's open up, let's uh, uninstall the heatsink and see if there's anything different underneath. I do think the battery label is a bit different, um, perhaps, but you know, that doesn't really matter at all. While I'm taking apart this heat sink, um, any of you guys have any questions about either um, you know, this laptop, laptops in general, computers, engineering, um, about me, what I do, uh, my school, or, you know, uh, other projects that I've done, or anything that you're wondering about regarding any of the content that I produce. So if you didn't know, um, I go to I go to UC Berkeley 
as a mechanical engineering undergrad. I'm currently at the end of my sophomore year, it's my second year. Our school has uh, physically closed down and moved to online classes as most of the schools around the world have. At university, I lead the electric race car team called Formula Electric at Berkeley. Um, I'm the team president and I take charge of team logistics and operations and uh, public relations and the overall management of the team including some finance stuff and some human resources as you would call it. And of course a lot of the, the stuff on the technical side. Um, on the technical side I'm a powertrain engineer so I deal with the electric motor um, drivetrain of the electric race car. And one of my projects was uh, using using a lot of motor data to optimize the best gear ratio and motor configuration for our race car to be not only fast but also energy efficient, which is part of the Formula SAE competition um, aspects. So I really enjoy um, being able to apply some of my engineering knowledge that I learned in class to some of these uh, real-world products that, I'm, that I've been passionate about since I was very young. I got my first computer on it when I was eight. Uh, when I was two, I, there, was, there was an old family video of me at two years old um, going up to a Windows 98 computer and moving the mouse all the way to the bottom left corner of the monitor and clicking repeatedly and absolutely like a like a like a little maniac on the start menu because that's the only thing I knew that I could do. I knew that uh, if you Oh, look at that. So there's interesting. So there's no more um, glue on this cable right here. Um, last generation and the generation before, we had a lot of glue. We're not seeing it here. Okay. So, okay, so this is what we have. It literally looks the exact same. I think, like, resistor by resistor, diode by diode, the exact same. Um, Power circuit seems the same, so you're going to get the same charging behavior of the 2019 Next Pro. Not too bad, but it might still have some some charging throttling under load, which you can mostly eliminate with my mods. And then um, this is the uh, Samsung SSD right here, and just like the 2019 model, the thermal pad. Uh, has been added for the SSD. Keep in mind, you'll want to make that uh, thermal pad contact with the controller, not the NAND. Right. Let's see where that is contacting right now. That is, unfortunately, not really controlling uh, co contacting the controller. Uh, it does seem to be contacting these two. These two uh, chips. Do you know what this one is? Wait, that thermal material on the uh, GPU RAM, uh, is that uh, is that the reusable pudding stuff? I think that is, because, yeah, yeah, it's a very, like, strange shape. Oh, yeah, that stuff's amazing. That's that, that stuff's amazing. I love that stuff, but it's... Oh, yeah, did, didn't that make so a video expensive. about that? Like, thermal no, pudding? No, it's not even that. It's just, like, the... It's, it's really expensive, that stuff, but it's, but it's neat. I, I love it every time I see it. So, so how is it, like, I guess, like, in, in what way is it reusable? You can just kind of smush it back and... and yeah, you just smush it back and... <laughs> it's, okay. um, it doesn't cure. That's the thing. I see. Cure. Right. Um, so we've kind of ripped through the regular thermal pad on the GPU itself. Um... So that's kind of unfortunate, but it's a it's not the best thermal pad you can have anyway. And I plan on 
doing a copper shim mod to this just like I did last time. But I won't bore you with repeated operations. Uh, we have the 9560 UHD, so that, I think that's the same Wi-Fi card. Don't think you have uh, Wi-Fi 6. Right. You know what's too bad is that it's still only uh, 2x2 uh, I know I want to I know I have to hold on to TXT. Mm. Yeah, you do get more throughput on those, I think, according to notebookcheck.net. Yeah, they're not on AX yet. Right. Um, there, there's really not much here uh, anymore. You got, you got your, your graphite sheet under the keyboard. Um, you know the, the same two layer deal uh, from the 2019. I would suppose I, I would uh, uh, you know assume in 2018 they had a single layer, and then uh, in 2019 they added a second layer. I don't know if it's got anything to do with the popularity of my graphite sheet mod. Um, by the way, I have more graphite sheet stock. Uh, that just came along with this computer. My friend brought it over. So, if you guys are looking for graphite sheet and heat pipes to do the mods, they'll be up on eBay. Cool. So, is there anything else uh, specifically that you guys would like to see in the chat? Um, any anything else in here that we can dig deeper into? So, uh, Ison Visser says, I don't know if your uh, if your name is if I pronounced your name correctly, but uh, are those hacks safe to do without damaging the laptop? So, um, they they are safe without to, to do without damaging the laptop as long as you don't screw up uh, some something uh, and and you know break something accidentally. Um, I've been running the mods on my 2019 model for 11 months now and I've seen no issues. The only thing I've seen is lower temperatures, more performance. Um, so, so, so far, I mean, take, take my word with a grain of salt because I'm just some random guy on the internet, right? But um, so far I've not gotten any um, super weird issues with like, you know, my computer started like blue screening after I did my, it did your mods or, you know, my computer can't boot anymore or, you know, something fried on my board after I did the mods. I haven't received any comments like that. And I've got, you know, like 300 comments or so on the, the mod guide page. So it, it seems to be all right. But of course, no, yeah, like, no yeah, be, it's, be careful. Be careful. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, None of us are responsible for you know, anything we yeah. anything that may or may not happen. Yeah, this is your disclaimer. You know, like I, I think I have a disclaimer on my page already. If you choose I, to do the mods, you relinquish any. Um, I relink you 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 forfeit the ability to sue me if, if uh, you know the mods cause your computer to break. You know, in any I really way. don't like being that guy, <laughs> but um, it's important to go over the legal disclaimers. And actually, you think most people just go over them, but I've actually had people you know who I've given them to that. They're like, wait a second, I'm going to think this over. Um, now, you, you you definitely should, because from an experienced computer technician's point of view, you know, this, these aren't very um, dangerous ones at all, in my opinion. But from, for someone who hasn't had a lot of experience with uh, computer work, uh, there are a lot of things that can go wrong. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if you're not very good with the screwdriver, mm -hmm. and the screwdriver slips, you knock off a little component on there, you know, all those little pieces, you know, if you make a little mistake like that, you could, you know, you could damage the hardware off and beyond repair. Also, I noticed that uh, you still have the battery connected. Um, you really want to be careful with that. Yeah. Because um, with that battery connected, there, I can see a lot of uh, places in that board that are likely to have power going to if you take a screwdriver, you can drop a screw, you know, down there, you know, on the board. You can short something up and, and permanently break the board. Yeah. So, <clears throat> one of the one of the um, slightly inconvenient things about the Netbook Expo is that you can't disconnect the battery before removing the heatsink. Um, the battery connector is hidden under the heatsink. So, 
Yeah, Larry's right. Always disconnect the battery before you do any further operations. Uh, fortunately, you know, um, Larry reminded me in time before I started, you know, taking anything else off the computer. Because, um, like, uh, you know, things like the backlights and some other parts, you know, parts that might have power running them, if you unplug those while they're you know, powered, it could damage them. Okay, so let's see what's going on in the chat right now. Someone's asking, um, what's the thickness of the copper shim? It's a 0 0.3 millimeter. Um, go on to the mod guide uh, in the link in the description under this live stream. And all of the materials required are in the shopping list. The reason I use a 0.3 millimeter copper shim on the GPU is because this thermal pad on the GPU is 0.5 millimeters thick and it compresses to about 0.3 millimeters when it's actually installed. So by using a 0.3 millimeter, you're, you're uh, putting the correct amount of pressure onto the GPU chip. Um, I just want to be careful, absolutely do not bend your copper plate uh, or copper shim. Uh, if you bend that, Thermal performance will be a lot worse. You want to talk about what what happens when, when you uh, when you when you do blend it? You're talking about the uh, the thermal contact with the base plate. Thermal right? contact goes really bad. Mm. Um, the MacBook Pro has treated poor design in the past. Anyway, they had a piece of copper just to interface the CPU to the board, and the copper was actually used to. Um, that's a little spin pin too. So you just bend up a little bit and screw it down. Yeah. yeah. Gives pressure. And if you get that anywhere wrong, if you try to bend them a little more just to get a little more pressure, you, it'll totally wreck the thermal contact. If you push down on it too some while it's running, you'll get like 20 feet bad. Yeah. So I got my 91% isopropyl alcohol right here, and we're going to use it to wipe off the original thermal paste. And today we're gonna do a little bit, do something a little bit different. We're gonna apply a liquid metal straight away on, on stream. Uh, Larry probably has some, some things to say about that, but <laughs> we're gonna do it. Oh, we're doing liquid metal again? Yes, so, so as I mentioned, liquid metal did kill my first 2018 MacBook X Pro, but this time I am a wiser man. I'm going to so, use the Dirt Bauer method of applying the liquid metal to the uh, the Q-tip first, um, the cotton swab first, uh, and then using the cotton swab to indirectly apply it to the GPU. Uh, so to the are, CPU. We, are we doing uh, uh, jam to get to... That's right. We're going to use the thermal putty to... Uh, to use as a dam. I made a video, a very short video about this thermal putty. It's great. Um, it's got 12 watts per meter Kelvin of thermal conductivity. If you want to learn more about, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm also going to use uh, electrical tape probably because I think this is aluminum, right, Larry? This the surrounding um, right here. It looks like aluminum. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is. Or it might be I mean, steel. That, that in itself is not important. Yeah, um, I, I know you can probably like corrode through that and it'll probably be fine, but I don't want to. <laughs> so so I guess we'll we'll do electrical tape and then we'll do a dam as well. And we're all gonna do this together live for the first time ever. I've never tried this before using this particular method. Um, don't squeeze liquid metal thermal paste directly onto your chip. That's really risky because you don't know how far that liquid metal is going to squirt. So you could very easily By squirt way, it this off. Is, this, is, this, is, this is where um, hardware has been bricked. Yes. So if you go here... This is not, it could be bricked. It's, it has been bricked. <laughs> so, so, so if you... If you're, for those of you playing along at home, which... 
don't go there. Um, if we go this far, you know, this is this is going to have a major risk of breaking stuff. Like breaking stuff, as in liquid metal thermal case will alloy with aluminum and many other metals. So it will literally disintegrate parts of the computer. You get it on the heat sink. Get it on the you know casing. You know, yeah. This this you know, be very careful where you put that material. Yeah, and uh, there there's not a great aftermarket uh, replacement parts. Mar uh, market for for uh, the MateBook X Pro, uh, ma it's mainly just on eBay, and they're all like scavenged parts from from broken laptops. So if you break your, you know, some some part on your board, you're either gonna, you know, ma maybe bring it to a super able professional, um, super capable professional to to you know do a board level repair, which probably is not very likely, um, or you're gonna have to shell out you know like maybe eight hundred dollars for a new board. Definitely don't do this if this is your only computer. Um, referring, referring to the liquid metal. Unless you know exactly what you're doing. You should probably watch a few videos on this. Don't just watch my video. Watch how other people do it and make your own decision about what, what's the best method. Contemplating shilling for Lewis Rossman. Yes, Lewis <laughs> Rossman's great. Is it store that Rossman group? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, everything is so simple when you're just a tiny YouTuber. You can just say whatever you want. Endorse anybody you want. Okay, so right now I'm just using... You say the wrong thing to get demonetized. That's true. Um, I wonder if, like, you know... Because we, we, we did go to PG-13. I don't think we, we went to Rated R for, uh, <laughs> for this live stream, but... Uh, we should be we should be good. Um, I'm, I'm I have green um, green dollar signs on all my videos right now. Tech channels are, are very fortunate. Can't say the same about some other channels. So I'm just using um, I got I got the 91% uh, alcohol on my kitchen paper napkin, and I'm just wiping off the original thermal paste. <coughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's very fresh. I mean, they, they announced this laptop like two months ago, and then they started shipping like a week ago. So these haven't been on the shelves for very long at all. Oh, it's our friend, the big red elephant. I've seen you before. Welcome back. So, somebody says, uh, I'm late for the stream. Quick recap, is the cooling good on the 2020 model? No, the cooling's not that great. It's the exact same cooling system as the 2019 model. Um, so, to spice it up, since we don't have anything new to discover today, to spice things up, we're going to try something different. We're going to do liquid metal thermal paste. And I'm going to do it properly this time, hopefully. <laughs> don't want to brick my, you know, uh, $1,000 plus laptop on, on the first hour. Uh, first, you know, it's it's only been two hours since I've had this out of the box. We're aiming to be LCT, but we're not there yet. Uh, what do you mean by that? You know how LCT breaks stuff on. Yeah, um, let's not aim for that. How about that? <laughs> Finish this uh, cleaning process off with uh, a Q-tip. I should probably start using generic names like Cotton Swab for our international audience. It's more professional to do it that way. The American language is so like commercialized, you know. It's called hook and loop, not Velcro. Like they have, they have like similar, you know. Um, I said the American language, the American dialect. Um, and here's the thing. Um, interestingly enough, the it's not commercialized. It's actually anti-commercialized. When you use trademarks in a generic way, 
it actually erodes the treatment. And that's actually not a good thing. Hmm, interesting. So by by using you know these trademarks, like saying, oh, Velcro would hit just mean, you know, supposed to move. Yeah. Um, you know, that's uh you're 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 sticking it to the Velcro company. Yeah, but then also, doesn't it also have the opposite effect of like whenever some somebody thinks of Hook and Loop, they think of Velcro, so they always buy that brand. This is true, but here's the problem: if everyone starts saying Velcro when they really just mean Hook and Loop, eventually, uh, what happens is the Velcro loses their trademark, which means anyone making Hook and Loop can call it Velcro. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. And. Do you think that's going to happen to, let's say, Photoshop? Here's the thing, though. Who, who on the market right now actually makes a competitor to Photoshop? Uh, what was that software that, that you, you recommended me earlier? Affinity Photo. Yeah. Well, there's no reason for them to call themselves Photoshop. So it's kind of yes. It's, it's it's interesting how that's different for software. Well, I think part of it is that for software, it's sort of like an ecosystem. Um, you know Photoshop because you know how to use it. It's like it's got that you know educational community. It's got that you know. It's not just. Not a lot of barriers to entry, and the other thing is, they're basically fungible. Like, you know, look at Luke Fasteners brands. Brands aside, you know, they all work the same. So yeah, Photoshop that's right. Versus Affinity, it's sort of like talking about sort of different paradigms, different ecosystems. It would it wouldn't make sense. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, I really like these uh, these types of conversations. Um, it's kind of like like a little 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 podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, basically what it is at this point. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess podcast is the collective noun for for the uh, modern male species. You have a pride of lions, and you have a podcast of men. So somebody said, uh, let's see, uh, Cyril Alex uh, said in the chat. Oh, I gotta just step in there. He said in the chat that uh, he installed Windows 8.1. That's on MateBook X Pro? That's funny. Why would you install it in Windows 8.1? <laughs> So um, for those of you who are, who are wondering about the uh, the drivers after after installing uh, after reinstalling Windows, we'll take a look at that right after we up finish applying the liquid metal thermal paste. We'll do a system reinstall. Uh, since you guys are looking for the exact same process of system reinstall, uh, I think it would be better to actually go through that actual process instead of trying to approximate it with uh, Windows to go USB. And uh, yeah, I don't mind I don't mind spending more time on the screen as long as you guys uh, are interested in the content. I'm uh, I'm pass no passing all my classes this semester. That's a special policy for the COVID-19. Taking off the pressure just a little bit. Got to focus more on the race car team. Kind of a, stuff like this. 
Okay, so we've kind of created like this um, this dam with electrical tape. Okay, and furthermore, we're going to create a second dam with thermal putty. Larry, what do you think about that idea? That's a pretty good idea. Um, now, of course, uh, many people have access to thermal putty. Digikey.com. Not sponsored. <laughs> okay, so, so where are you putting that thermal putty? Uh, just uh, around. It's, it's yeah, kind of hard to shape. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. Um, I think you should not, you should uh, put thermal putty directly bisecting the substrate, not um, on top of electrical tape. Electrical tape has a tendency to make pieces when it gets hot. It's going to start peeling. Hmm. Interesting. So, happens, so do you think we should just forego the electrical tape then? Honestly speaking, if you have the thermal putty, you make sure it contacts the copper. I think you should get rid of the thermal putty. Hmm. Okay, and you think that'll actually be more effective than the electrical tape? Yeah, because because your the electrical tape it, it's only protecting the the uh, metal surrounding the thermal putty. Yeah. It it's yeah it's not a sealing uh it's not a it's not a seal it's a it's a cover. Because like th this is kind of like the um, the rubber gasket that you would have on your uh, on your cam covers. Uh, sorry, your 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 uh, your valve covers on your car, uh, or the uh, the seal that would seal up your uh, differential and the you know. I don't know. You, you can you can put more than you need on here. There's some that can be. Yeah, I just hope it doesn't squish over to the to the uh, CPU itself though. You know what I mean? Because it could it can squish both ways. Fair enough. Oh, this is this is Do you know um, how big the gap is? Hmm? Do you know how big the gap is? Well so if you look at the base plate, it's got this uh, elevated plateau. Right? And but this oh, is oversized. The, the, the plateau is oversized for, for the chip. It kind of covers the entire like two two chips. You got the the main chip and the PCH. So I guess we'll be applying. Oh god, this is really hard to work with. <laughs> I'm having second thoughts about this. I don't know. Um, and another thing that I'm seeing here is that it's not very like adhesive to this particular surface. Oh, okay. Well, that's. You see, it kind of slides. You know what? Let's not use that. Yeah, I guess we're going back to the, the electrical tape then. But the electrical tape isn't doing so much. Yeah, that's true. Um, I guess the electrical you know tape is as, as good as nothing. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say if you wanted to do it properly. Yeah. I'd probably say use that from silicon. <laughs> you know, yes, but also like it's it's oh, you know what? You know what? Because, uh, you know, bath bath bathroom silicone is so viscous that, like, it's really hard to get it to squeeze out of a really thin nozzle. Um, right? Yes, but it's not viscous to that point. Um, I'm sure there are a lot of viscous things that could be cleaned properly. So, I just think that, uh, wait, also, is it's kind of hard to remove afterwards, isn't it? If you put a little bead on it, it's very easy. I mean, once you have, once you have a, let's say you have a, you have a seal that's like two millimeters uh, wide all around. Oh, that's not very strong at all. Yeah. Because, because I mean, it is, it is sort of an adhesive, uh, rather than just like a passive kind of gooey substance. Okay, in the chat we have uh, someone saying big red elephant says, uh, personally, I would never use liquid metal on portable devices, not on pure copper, only on nickel plated chips. Yeah. yeah. Thing is, it's gonna migrate into the copper. Yeah, that's gonna happen. Uh, but yeah, it'll probably work fine for you. Yeah, you know, you know, this is this isn't something we're suggesting people do. Just use it for fun. Exactly. Um, by the look of this computer, I, I'm, you know, this is like not my. Like, when I look at this computer, when I look at the fact that it has, you know, also four cores, uh, also the UHD 620 as its iGPU, uh, when I look at the fact that it freaking throttles to six watts um, under load, 
this is not like the love of my life kind of situation. This is this is a situation where I'm probably gonna use this for a year and and move on to some other laptop and start modding that and deliver you know you still, you content still for you guys on that other laptop. Laptops, uh, to your parents. Hmm. Oh, you still give your old laptop to your parents? Yeah, so my 2019 model is probably going to my dad. So, so you do want it to last for a while. Yeah, um, but also, you know, because I get, like, a new laptop every year, there's they get a new laptop every year, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> right? I mean... So it has to last for two years. Yeah. You're a huge, huge user, man. You're... Yeah. Um... It'll migrate into the copper, and then like the technically the, the thermal conductivity of the copper, uh, well, no longer the copper is like copper fused with gallium now, uh, will be lower. But the decreased contact resistance of the thermal interface will more than make up for that, um, and it'll it'll be able to more than make up for that for for a while until it kind of you, you kind of reach a balance point. That, that would be my guess. Okay, so, I don't know. I just feel like we should probably, uh, we should probably do the uh, electrical tape anyway, you know? Um, just at the very least, it makes me feel a bit more comfortable. You don't want to get it on that metal. Like, ideally, you know what? Ideally, I would probably, like, hmm, I don't know, maybe, I'm thinking about, like, maybe 3D printing a little, like, little surrounding, but then that just, like, really small. And the compressibility of the most flexible 3D printing material is still not as uh, not as flexible as we want it, not as compressible as we really, want it. really, really flexible uh, material. I, I just had an idea. You could use thermal caps to do the seal of it. Hey, what if we use thermal paste to do the seal of it? Okay, no, no, don't, don't do that. It'll, it'll flow. Okay. Hmm. We have a co over here. Yeah. Um, no. no uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've seen this guy before. Um, I think he's made more constructive comments than he is right now. Okay. <laughs> um. It's cool. It's it's uh you know it's it's what what you should expect from from the kind of kind of quote unquote YouTuber who's kind of you know uh, really close with his audience you know kind of joke around and stuff self deprecate and this is the type of stuff that you should expect in return. Nah, it, it's uh, it's sticking. Okay, that's good. See, that stuff is silicone and it can stick on it. Silicone is terrible for sticking. But yeah, if you want to make something not sticky, you can put silicone silicone oil in it. Alright, so I just added two layers of this. I hope it doesn't become... Actually, I don't know about adding two layers, because then... Uh, you know, There's no need to put two layers. Two layers is going to make it easier to peel. I kind of just wanted to like raise the height of the dam, you know. But then, but but then I look at the the base plate and the plateaus on the base plate and uh, the extrusions protrusions on 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 the uh, base plate, and they're not that high, so you might end up, you know, um, end up. So about three D printing. Um, so thing about three D printing. The softer the material, the harder it is to print. Exactly. So you do have some considerations for doing that. Yeah. Some trade -offs. I used to I used to be big on three D printing, um, as you know, and uh, I used to be I used to print quite a bit of flexible material. I used to print uh, print flexion, which was uh, the most flexible material at the time. It might be still now. That was only uh, three years ago, and. Uh, 
I used to print, I print uh, this other material called Cheetah as well. They're all um, thermal plastic polyurethane or TPU. So they're they're kind of they're they're basically like rubber, um, and but then you can like melt it and extrude it out of a three D printer's nozzle. And uh, I had a I had a Wanhal uh, I three, or also known as a Maker uh, Maker Select V two from Monoplex. And I update uh, I upgraded that printer with uh, Flexion extruder. Oh yeah, I was not printing. Was I printing Flexion? I was not. It was Ninja Flex. Yeah, Flexion was the extruder name. Yeah, that was quite a long time ago. I was still in high school at that time. I was doing robotics, um, first robotics in high school. So there seems to be like a little bit of a mark on the CPU, but that always happens, it seems. Okay, yeah, if you don't have experience with the internals of laptops, this is not a good first product. Yeah. This is uh this is just material for entertainment on live stream. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna scoot this laptop no, up. Not a little just bit. this, I mean like a lot of the other stuff too. Like yeah. if you have the vision, just poke around with them. I mean I would I would definitely suggest you know getting comfortable yeah. you know, on a machine that supports the Windows system. If you have uh if you have a friend who, who's done this before, ask your friend to like guide you through your, your first project. Yeah, of course, you know, if it goes wrong, don't just blame your friend. <laughs> yeah. Um, ask your friends who like sit by you and tell you what to do, but then uh, not you know do the thing for you so that you actually have the the re ultimate responsibility. But, you know, there's always got to be a start. You know, we, we have, I think the uh, public uh, perception of electronics and electronics repair and uh, modification is, is very different than, than that regarding um, working on cars. Because, yeah, I mean, you have, you have lots of people learning and starting to work on cars uh, with very little... Guidance and you see this. This is this is why this is why you have to be very careful with this um, liquid metal thermal paste because, as you can see right now, this thing is just like freaking. It just squirted onto my table. So very very dangerous. I got this whole clump of it right here. Um, there's just not a lot of uh, surface area on on this particular cotton swab, and it's not very like uh, what do you call it like. It doesn't soak in the, it's not very uh, absorbing of the, of the liquid metal. Damn, that's a lot of liquid metal on my desk. Even before uh, the liquid metal gets into something that shouldn't, you know. <laughs> before you put the bad paper. Definitely do not think it's out of public transportation. <laughs> I think we, we have we have some uh, some excess on here. Um, I guess we can start with the heat sink because that's that's easier. It's just copper. So let's let's ap let's apply a coat of this. By the way, the uh, the particular brand that I'm using here is uh, Silver King from what is it? From Thermal Right, I think. Um, I wanted to try this different brand. Uh, it was kind of different. Um, from uh, from Thermal Grizzly's Conducto Knot, but it's pretty much the same material. It's the almost the exact same thermal conductivity. Um, the Silver King is listed as slightly higher thermal conductivity than the Conducto Knot, but it's probably about the same. So I'm just going to apply um, medium pressure to a good amount of pressure to the uh, base plate to kind of rub the liquid metal into the base plate. I feel like there's there's sort of a little bit too much, so I'm going to. 
remove a little bit of this. And you can see that um, some of it has kind That's of a lot. come into the base plate, but you can see that it's not actually fully um, bonded with the base plate yet. And so you can easily wipe off the entire layer and it doesn't really stick to the, the base plate. And so you kind of need to really rub it in um, and have it start to really, really stick to the layer. Even, and it'll, it'll remain on the layer even if you kind of like start wiping the, the puddle around. It reminds me of solder. It feels like you're melting solder onto this. Yeah. Like back in the day, this, we'd do this with mercury. Back before it was known to the state of California as a common <laughs> I'm going to try, to try to rub it in, and then after I rub it in, I'm going to remove the excess. And uh, this generic um, white Q-tip instead of the black one that came with the thermal paste, there's a lot more ab absorb uh, absorbing of it. So at this point in the stream, you got like 16 people, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and just start playing <laughs> Um, we're not going to lose any, any more people than we already have. <laughs> oh boy, what's coming? <laughs> so, you know, one of the things I found interesting is, uh, the mate book is always used as a way to do things now. Yeah. You know, here's the thing. In theory, a plate heat sink isn't even a bad idea. There's a good amount of surface area. Yeah, the problem is, the problem is the, the, the flow speed. So, um... In, in convection, the flow speed is super important. And oh, remember, Larry? You know, a lot earlier you were you were telling me about how you know I think you were the one who initially taught me that um, turbulent flow is more com uh, has has a higher convective coefficient. Uh, so, so here's the problem. The problem is that you in in thermal transfer. So when you have like a a piece of metal and a fluid, you know, you have that boundary layer. Yeah. That, you know, that layer of air that's between the metal and the rest of the air. As yeah. we all know, air is really bad at high temperature. So you're going to have one sort of thin layer of hot air over your, uh, you're going to have that thin layer of hot air over your heat sinks. And that's not going to help you because yeah. heat flow is going to have a difference in that. Yeah. So um, by adding a fan, what you're doing is you're moving that hot air away and you're trying to disturb the boundary layer and get cold air uh, you know, to contact the heat sink. Yeah. So um, when, you, when you think about the boundary layer, um, you want to think about the viscosity of the, of the fluid because when there is a viscosity, and all, all fluids have some viscosity, the viscosity of air is really, really low, but it, it's, it still has viscosity. And anything that has uh, viscosity is going to stick, as you said, to the, uh, to the surface of whatever solid it's flowing over. And so uh, at the, the boundary condition, um, mathematically speaking, uh, literally on the surface of the, of the solid um, dictates that because, because there is this, uh, you know, viscosity, uh, basically you have, you have this um, fluid being dragged over the solid, all right? So viscosity means that there is like a certain friction to it. Um, and so, uh, you know, fluids, fluids undergo continuous, continuous shearing. And so you have like this shearing of the fluid over the solid. And then that, that rate of, of shearing is, uh, is affected by the viscosity. And so... What you have is you have this uh, as you as you go further from the solid, the fluid uh, flows faster and faster. Um, but then at the solid, there's actually zero uh, zero slippage at all. 
And so at, at the surface, it's actually only just conduction. Convection is really just conduction, but with a moving fluid. Um, and it's sort of just, you know, like I was saying earlier, the drive-through analogy, it's, 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 still, it's still the same conduction. It's just like people, or rather molecules, moving uh, one after another. So they're kind of taking turns uh, doing that conduction. And because you have that, uh, that mass flow, you have, you have this uh, energy transport with mass flow. But the difference that, uh, that turbulence makes is um, when there's turbulence, uh, turbulence basically means that you have a, um, your, your uh, what do you call it, your, uh, the speed, the momentum of the fluid overcomes the viscous forces. So the so the inertial inertial forces overcome the the viscous forces. So sp the speed, the sheer speed and momentum of the fluid takes over and renders the vis uh, viscosity kind of irrelevant. And so it does start to tumble and slip. Don't don't spend so long using the uh, using one feature. You're gonna end up with more air. And yeah. You know that gives it said error. Yeah, yeah, and I'm 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 looking really closely at it to uh to make sure that uh, that I'm not seeing too much hair in here. Um, and that's kind of the reason why they uh, they included these like non-hairy uh, Q-tips, I guess, to to uh, reduce that. But I don't. They should have included more, to be honest. So, you know, it's not just about um, whether it's turbulent or whether it's uh, laminar. It's about, well, I mean, turbulence and laminar makes a huge difference because literally, like, you're, you're, um, your nuzzle number takes a huge jump as you make the transition, uh, or rather, like basically the effectiveness of the of the convection. But then, even within the the, the uh, laminar or turbulent region, you do have like increasing um, increasing convection coefficients with higher flow higher flow rates. Yeah, by, the, by the way, I think we're going a little too far with the science here. We're down to eleven, just when I thought we couldn't do anything. <laughs> Yeah, at this We're point, I'm, I'm just like rubbing a plate with and, and babbling about heat transfer. So um, this is like really, really niche content right now. Um, well, what's probably happened is anyone who understood that just just got nightmares from their heat transfer class. Uh, and we couldn't handle it anymore. Okay, let, 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 let's switch it up then. Let's talk about, let's talk about something more interesting. Um, and also, I'm kind of done over here with the, uh, with the application. Yeah, you know, I can't really tell if it's fur or if it's just like the the liquid metal. I think no, I don't, I don't think it's fur because it's literally like there there's no thickness to this layer anymore. I put a lot of fur. <laughs> okay, it's good enough. Yeah, I don't think that's actually fur because they they don't seem like lines. Um. Yeah, you think fur looks like lines? They they kind of clump up into balls, don't they? Like, I mean, like squiggly curves and whatnot, right? Oh, crap. There, there was one hair in there. Uh, I don't have a lot of these uh, these nice Q-tips. This is Q-tips for the wrong tool to use, I think. What would you use instead, then? Finger condom. Demonetized. <laughs> Hey, we're 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 back to oh gosh, we, we, you, Larry, you just lost us another viewer. <laughs> we're down to no, we gained one. No, we gained one and then we lost one, and now we're losing one again. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, it's basically just us hanging out. 
Um, anything going on in the chat? Um, I think this looks good now. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how this goes. If it doesn't perform well, then I'll like rub it with alcohol and start over. Fortunately, it is off on the uh, rubber mouse, uh, mouse pad. So I'm gonna get another Q-tip. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna start off with the white Q-tip that's more furry, just because it absorbs the um, this better. Oh god, that's that's also kind of excessive. And then I'm going to switch to the black one to really rub it in. These are kind of like trying to pull it in. No, I'm not pulling it in. Well, you learned something in chemistry class. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the comments. Uh, Orso says, pro makeup artist here. This babe is ready. Now let's ruin I mean taste the CPU. <laughs> <laughs> We're really improvising here. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be more concerned at the waste of thermal paste, the contamination of it, or the... All of the above. The way you're holding that over the CPU. What moment? That's a Twitch TV uh, thing. Monka S. It's a it's a better TTV emote. People say that in live streams when something uh, in the critical moments. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm not even going to attempt that if that happens. <laughs> Send it to Lou with Rossi. Uh, now let's switch to the, the black Q-tip and rub this in a little bit harder. Let's see, you know, how many uh, how many watts we can sustain after this, you know. Uh, be kind of interesting. Yeah. You know, I I, I realize I've kind of uh, kind of uh, scooped to the uh, level of. Uh, of the generic laptop YouTuber who just puts liquid metal thermal paste in everything. Instead of actually trying to engineer something. <laughs> Not that I won't. Like the next thing is I'm going to like design a design a new fan cover that that uh, that better integrates the copper fan cover with the the uh, Finstack heatsink. Because previously I had to solder everything, um, solder the heat pipe to the uh, original heatsink. Uh, by the way, I'm talking about the um, adding a second heatsink to my laptop video. Um, I had to solder heat pipes to both the original heatsink and to the new Finstack heatsink, and that was two solder joints, or rather two for each heat pipe, and that was uh, that was not very easy to do. Definitely something that you know can't be reproduced. 
um, by by a majority of our viewers. So I'm going to switch it up and try to engineer something a little bit a little bit more convenient and effective uh, using a little bit more contiguous copper. Um, th there's a few ways that I'm thinking about it um, that uh, could potentially uh, you know, require no heat you, pipes. You actually, and here's the thing, if you actually had connections with people in China, yeah. or if you had like some form of funding, yeah. I've been suggesting it for years, actually, since we started the whole laptop heatsink project. Um, the best bet for you yeah. to get better performance out of computers and stuff like that, the best bet for all this stuff, right, yeah. is going to be custom heatsink. Yeah. With with a custom heatsink, you can do anything you want. Um, here's just anecdotes, right? You, you know you know the MacBook Air, the old one, not the, not the new one, it's the practical one. Mm -hmm. um, the old one, the old one with the keyboard and everything, right? Um, the the heatsink in that is absolutely microscopic. That thermostat, it's really, really thin. It's really, really fine too. It's microscopic. I can hold seventeen watts on the processor with that. Um, and here you've got seventeen watts. So you know you could manage to get. Stacks like that, packed away with it. You could, you could have a winner. Yeah. Um, you should consider that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if we could, you know, manufacture like a variant of this thing with um, with a connected yeah. uh, fin stack already built into it, yeah. then that would be great. Um, I kind of want to replace the uh, the GPU um, the GPU uh, thermal pad. So, and I don't I don't want to bother like putting on a temporary thermal pad because I know that like that's not going to be enough. A thermal pad is, is still going to cause um, some throttling on the GPU. So I think we're going to do the the copper copper shim mod as well. Which uh, shouldn't take too long. Okay, so I'm just gonna remove this. The thermal pad that they use on the GPU is really soft. Um, you you know, with thermal pads, you always want to strive a. a strike a balance between compressibility uh, and conf uh, conformability, um, conformity rather, and uh, <clears throat> and the oh god, should have thrown this in the trash earlier, and the uh, thermal conductivity. Anything going on in the? Okay, so uh, what's going on in the, in the chat right now? Barry, you want to read that to me? Um, in the chat. Um, anyone asked to go to jail quest? How did your friend travel back from China with the MateBook X Pro when airlines are suspended? Okay, good question. Story time, <laughs> not really story time. It's it's uh it's pretty simple. There's no there's no uh, current um travel restrictions for for U.S. nationals, um, and permanent residents uh, from China into the U.S. right now. I I believe um there might be a I think there is a self quarantine period that they will like kind of follow up with you, um. Make sure you're staying home. Uh, I mean, everybody's staying home anyway at this point. Okay, well, well, I'm just gonna say, you know, um, it's best to not do non-essential travel. Mostly, yeah, a lot for your own sake and a lot yeah. for other people's sake. The guy yeah, was, um, the, the the guy was, I think, working in China. Um, it's it's my it's my dad's friend. Uh, okay, so so if um, 
you know, so if you're, if it's one off, you know, we're going to go home, yeah. you know, that, that's fine. But, yeah. You know, what we don't want to see is, you know, everyone going out. I know the U.S. is going to open very soon, but, yeah. um, you know, what we really, all the evidence points to social distancing and staying at home being some of the most effective ways to control the spread of this virus. And I think, um, I think, you know, we can all do our part to yeah. make sure this doesn't go on longer than we, we will get through it. Definitely. And, and we need to sort of uh, temporarily comply with some changes in our lifestyle to yeah. make sure it goes long. Yeah. I, I've, been, uh, I've been in this house for like two months now. <laughs> I, I haven't been outside my neighborhood. Um, I've literally just been taking walks in my little cul-de-sac. You gained, uh, you gained, uh, you gained three viewers. <laughs> Wait, this is literally the Onion episode where, like, the, the people on the news network are, like, l looking at the TV rating at the, at, in real time, and they're, like, uh, finding what to say according to that. It's kind of funny. It's a funny The Onion episode. Uh, it's, it's also kind of like that. Um, it reminds me of that uh, episode of Rick and Morty where... where uh, Morty gets this, uh, was this like this future vision thing where he sees the the future and he like speaks super slowly to see like the the future in real time to see each of his whether each of his words are good for his future or not. That's that's kind of what we're we're seeing. Is it here. true that if you ingest liquid metal, it cures COVID? Um, <laughs> so, um. It cures COVID liquid by curing cur curing uh, you as a as a disease to the world. So, 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 so liquid metal itself is not particularly toxic. Uh, it's you know now don't go out and eat it. <laughs> do not you know you know this is not you know listen ever do not try this at home. Do not try this anywhere. <laughs> now, you know liquid metal thermal paste is not designed for um, human ingestion. But based on you know based on what's in it, mostly gallium and some other. Uh, metals uh, yeah. you know it should be fairly inert it should really just pass through your system um i mean you might get trace minerals or whatnot from it but i mean there, there are way better ways to do that um you know I, I i don't see any scientific way that you know liquid metal will do anything it helps dissipate fever no um thermal paste does not help dissipate heat because it it would not increase surface area of fever I, I, I think I think people are just yes. trolling you, Larry. <laughs> yes, I know people are trolling, and I'm trolling them by taking it seriously. Okay, <laughs> that's great. I, and, and it's because I'm out of things to ramble about. <laughs> if I ramble about anything else, we're gonna start losing viewers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, let's uh, let's put on our uh, copper sham really quick. Because now we don't have a thermal pad. On the, on the, uh, you know what? I'm gonna no, I take that back. I'm gonna try something different, cause uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give this another try. So previously, um, about a year ago, I tried, um, basically using no thermal pad and no copper shim on the GPU uh, die, and I, I think it got around the same temperature, slightly worse than with uh, copper shim. But this time, I'm just since it's a new laptop and it might have different manufacturing toler tolerances, I'm going to try the same thing again and see if we can get um, a similar level of performance without using the copper shim. And that you know that saves some work and that saves a little bit of money um, and you know a lot of time. So we're going to try that. So I'm going to get my traditional thermal paste out for the GPU. The GPU does not require that much um, extra extra cooling capacity. Um, at some point, you're gonna actually get like the better your your uh, contact with the heatsink is. At some point, if the GPU is stressed, you'll actually get heat flow from the CPU to the GPU, which is which is fine. You know, it's kind of like the uh, dead sil or dark silicon, um, as they call it, when it when it comes to uh, 
the uh, Intel KF series, the F series that have the integrated graphics disabled, the iGPU cores disabled, and people are calling it kind of a dark silicon that kind of soaks up some of the heat from the die. But really, it's uh, it's not really that significant because again, in steady state, um, extra extra thermal mass doesn't matter. So you're really, as far as in steady state, you're really just um, increasing, you're adding a route of heat to escape, and you're decreasing, uh, I guess, uh, transistors that are, that are powered on. Okay, cool. I think, I think we can apply the regular thermal pastes now. we can put this thing on. So when we put this thing on, we need to so that my anti-static was stopped right here. Right. Yeah. We need to reconnect the battery first before we put on the heatsink. It's not even on. Oh you know what? I'm mm, interesting. I might have to come back in here at some point. How so? Because, well, first of all, I need to uh, bring, uh, swap out the SSD. After I, uh, you know, I'm, should I? Yeah, I should probably make a Windows reinstall. I was thinking like maybe I could just like straight up just swap the SSD from my old notebook and it'll be close enough in terms of system configuration. Did you put the copper shim on? No, I'm, I'm going to try using no copper shim. Because it's like almost enough, um, the gap is almost small enough to use just thermal paste. And people have, and I've tried this before, it's like almost as good. So we might actually see like enough performance without copper shim today. So just wanted to verify that again. So let's. Uh Start over here. What else is going on in the chat? Are you going to leave the tape forever? Yeah. DRMs are still absolutely terrible on the 2020 model. I, um, I think the problem is mostly the CPU temperature. Yeah, that's right. So only when you really lower the CPU temperature do you start to see effects of the DRM bottlenecking it. Um, and that is, uh, I actually explore that um, in depth in an upcoming video that I'm editing right now, where I, uh, I was able to basically get rid of all sorts of uh, throttling on the XPS 13 2-in-1, except for thermal throttling. Um, and I started seeing the VRM choking the CPU and lowering it to 400 megahertz periodically. And it, it no longer happened when I put it on a cooling stand. And so I knew that was VRM problem. At that point, you need to increase VRM cooling. But it only hap that only started happening when I was pulling like 45 watts. So it, it's pretty competent. The uh, XPS 13 2 in 1 is, is really competent. But then, you know, it has a non replaceable SSD. That's really annoying. Not just because it's non replaceable, but, it's, but because it's slow and non replaceable. If it's fast and non replaceable, or non replaceable and slow, I don't really mind. I can just, you know, either, either there would be no problem or. As, as far as like performance, or I would just replace it. But now you're stuck with a slow one. 
episode. I didn't really like that. And I didn't like the fact that it has no USB-A. And also, its speakers weren't really that good. Seriously. Like, people, you know, in the press and, like, you know, in the, 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 the mainstream tech reviewers, they, they, they seem to praise the XPS 13 2-in-1, and, as well as the regular new XPS 13 9300s speakers. But I really don't think they're that good. They're not as good as the MateBook X Pros, and they're definitely not as good as the MateBook X Pros with Dynamic View. After screwing back the heatsink, try to wiggle the SSD out. Okay, I'm going to try that. Um, uh, I've never done that. Be, be careful with that. So, like, it's, it's a known method um, of, of replacing the SSD on the X Pro because... Actually, you know what? I'm mm, No, I, I shouldn't do that because on the 2019... Excuse me, and the 2020 X Pros, uh, I don't think I should be recommending that because... Um, there's a thermal pad now. And so you're going to be shearing the thermal pad as you wiggle it out. Definitely not good. On the 2019 model, and uh, no, 2018 model, there was no thermal pad. It was basically empty. There was no connection with the heatsink. And so there's not really nothing stopping it from just sliding out. Actually running on really, really, uh, really low hours of, of sleep right now. Um, I woke up early today to do a design review with with some engineers at Ford um, for our race car. And uh, wanted to take a take a power nap before coming on live, but uh, was too excited to fall asleep. So are you left-handed? No, I'm kind. I'm a little bit ambidextrous. Because I noticed you're using your uh, left hand. Uh, it's just because I've uh, I don't know I've got I've got um, I should probably be using the the hand that's got the uh, the ESD strap. <laughs> but I guess. Uh, so what I usually do with screwdriver type is I use I use uh, one hand to guide the rotation using my left, and I use my right to turn. The One-handing a screwdriver is uh, really slow for me. Yeah, um, it usually is really slow for me as well. Um, I think it's the same, but um, it's different for this particular screwdriver from iFixit because it has like this really smooth um, rolling top. So you kind of just like use that to apply downward pressure on the screw while you turn. So you can literally just do this and it's super fast actually. This uh, iFixit kit is discontinued now. Their new screwdriver is plastic, which I guess is better for you know ESD purposes. Okay, just testing the, the screws for, for tightness. Because once once the uh, the warping of the heatsink plate kind of settles in with all the screws being uh, applied, you might end up with some screws that now feel looser than they were before. So I'm just testing to make sure we get the best contact. Oh, you know what? What, what I'm interested to see is whether the end user license agreement appears again because now the CMOS has been cleared. Larry, do you think that'll appear again? Oh, 
okay, here, here is a little bit difficult. Oh, God. Okay. That's really loud. So, uh, Kevin asks, what can you do about the fact that the fans go really loud when they're charging? Um, use it in a cooler room. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so um, the, the temperature of your CPU, um, if you basically like pretty much, if you can decrease your room temperature by five degrees, you can de decrease your CPU temperature by five degrees. Um, in, in heat transfer, everything is relative temperatures, and it's uh, it's mostly linear. I mean, not accounting for you know different thermal resistivities in uh, varying with temperature. Oh god, this is like really hard to push in. Ah, oh, there we go. Oh god. Okay. Um, and then we have. Okay, I think I might have. Okay, usually this is a lot easier once once you've done it a few times, but what I made a mistake of not sliding the bottom in because you kind of have to do that. I mean, or at least if you don't have to do that, it still like helps a lot. It really helps. You see, if you slide in the bottom there, it helps the the thing go in like that. There we go. Yeah. Okay, I'm not gonna put on the screws because it doesn't really care at this point because it's so tight, at least for now. And uh, let's boot this up again. So the computer works, which is great. What's going on? Is it powering on? Please don't tell me you need to break this. I'm looking at your facial expression right now. Oh, 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 there you go. It's on. Oh, okay. So this is a this is a this is a side effect of uh, unplugging the battery. This is really interesting. So all of this is going on in the UEFI. Um so it's uh so what this means is you've got you've got your hardware scan or hardware diagnostics um re reset to factory settings and exit and proceed to Windows 10. And China loves to spell it like Win Ten and just disregard the dose. That's a really good. Uh, that's a really good uh, interface. Yeah, I, I really like this. It's it's totally um, it's like Retina quality too. Like it's utilizing the entire like three three thousand by two thousand resolution, um, but it's also at the same time like not super small. It's it's the correct scaling. Let's see. Let's see what happens with when we do this. Oh, oh my God! Look at that. That's actually pretty smooth. Now there's no there there's kind of um, kind of a tearing going on. Like there's no V-sync, um, but it's smooth. Yeah, this is good enough. Yeah, this is really smooth. What the heck? Um, this is so weird. And wait, the the mouse looks kind of like a Windows mouse, and this looks like Windows. This looks like the same code that you would see in like PC Manager. This is so weird. Huh. Oh well. Um, I guess like there's the detect hardware problems. I don't know what it does. Uh, I don't think it's that interesting. Let's just go back into Windows. So yeah, that uh, that little little um, scary moment there. 
So, uh, Emrys says, after installing Windows, this recovery menu is now gone on my machine. So that could mean, okay, now we're doing Windows updates. That could mean this was part of, part of the Windows installation. Um, whether that's in the uh, UEFI, is there a, Mary, is there a boot partition now for UEFI? Boot partition? Yeah. No, this is an EFI partition. Okay, EFI partition. Um, no, but the EFI system partition doesn't contain any of the recovery stuff. Um, that's, uh, that's Windows recovery partition. Right. Where do you think this code is located? Because, like, our Which friend here is uh, the, uh, the, the, the diagnostic code that we just saw. Oh, uh, often that is actually part of the e UEFI. Hmm, okay. Uh, although I did see Windows loading. Yeah, Windows did load I before. I feel like that. it yeah. could. You know what? I feel like it's part of the recovery. Recovery of items. Hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're back in business. Um. Let's rerun our stress test. See if we get better temperatures. I'm going to plug in my USB drive. And we go to here, my drive. Whoops. Is that your uh, apps? Okay. Drive 95. Let's also open up hardware info. And Furmark. So the first thing I want to run is actually Furmark because I want to see whether the GPU throttles or not. After HW Info decides to load. Um, you know, right now I'm noticing that this computer really isn't as snappy as my, uh, my well configured. 2019 MacBook X Pro, and that's because of a bunch of reasons. Uh, basically, all the all the um, tweaks that uh, are in my laptop tweak guide they all kind of contribute a little bit to increasing the, the smoothness and snappiness of the system. Um, let's take a look at some of the the bloatware. I guess we're seeing the same bloatware because when we set up Windows, I initially um, selected US as the as the region. And that's why we get the same whatever candy crush. Um, so it's really not that different. But in terms of like, you know, bloatware, at least it doesn't have like freaking Norton antivirus or, you know, uh, some, some trial software or like some Wondershare power DVD or some weird stuff like that. So it's, it's a pretty clean um, distribution of Windows. Okay, so we've we've got uh, HW info ready. We're gonna be looking at the GPU, and let's go ahead and look at the GPU clock. So let's see, performance limit reason. What is that? Power. Uh, okay. Yeah, you have Prime ninety five and uh, Firmark. No, I haven't. I haven't uh, started Prime ninety five yet. Just for Mark, uh, how are you doing? We're doing sort of all right. It's, uh, let's see, utilization. It's uh, limited by utilization. So maybe I need to do this in a higher... No, it shouldn't be because, I mean, it's already, uh, you know, it's not perfect frame rate anyway. Also, my phone is about to run out of battery, so let me plug it in.
So what are we seeing here? Um, so we're not getting thermal throttling, we're getting power throttling. So this just means that uh, we're reaching the predetermined 10 watt power limit that's non-defeatable, at least as far as like our current methods uh, as users. Um, so yeah, it, it seems pretty pretty good. Now the temperature is still rising, but it's it's kind of plateauing. Um, it should stabilize at this rate at around 80 degrees, which is uh, not too bad. It's uh, it's not perfect. I've I've seen temperatures lower than this, so I would probably still do a copper shim mod. But you know, if you're super lazy and if you don't want to get a copper shim, then Wait, you. The, uh... It wouldn't be too bad to skip this. The, um, what do you call that? Uh, what was I going to say? Your, uh, no, sorry, I totally forgot. <laughs> yeah, so, so okay, GPU's so fine. just GPU. Oh, yeah. right. Is the fan running at full speed? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. We don't have a fan, um, Ever since they switched to the new fan, they no longer have the, uh, the fan speed in HW Info. And if HW Info doesn't have it, then uh, probably nobody has it. So now let's add in our, uh, our small FFTs in Prime 95. Yeah, so somebody said uh, make sure make sure uh, Furmark runs on the on the discrete graphics instead of the iGPU. Um, that is the case right now. Okay, now we've got uh, Furmark and Prime ninety five running at the same time, and ooh, not good, not good. It's better, but it's going down. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. Oh boy, why is this so freaking slow, this computer? Oh my god. Ah, oh, not good. 7.8 watts, 7.8 watts. Okay, we're not getting um, 90 degrees though. Let, let me see the core temperature. So 77, oh okay, so this is, oh, this is because we don't have um, throttle stop on right now. So let me, let me turn on throttle stop right away. So right now, like, this is basically still being limited by DPTF and we're getting like eight watts of power limiting. But if we turn throttle stop on, and you know, if we uh, let's see, so now we're back to now we're back to ninety degrees and fourteen, fifteen watts on the package. Hmm. Is throttle stop on? Yeah. Oh, we're getting 15 watts. This is like no better than before. Um, I feel like I'm, mm, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I okay. use a little how bit. About CPU, how about CPU only load? Yeah, let's, let's try that then. Because maybe now that we've improved the, um, the heat transfer from the GPU, the GPU is contributing to more of the heat load, maybe. I'd, I'd have to think more clearly about that. Yeah, it's not much better, dude. Seventeen point five watts. So I mean, it's a little bit better. It. I mean, I think we were at what? Also seventeen. Um. So so yeah. Um. Emmer says it's the cooling system which is bad. No classic heat sink and fan combination. So that's um. That's a good point. So when you're thermal, so think of, think of your, um, 
I guess it's kind of it's kind of hard to to kind of illustrate um, right now, but basically you've got you've got your um, uh, let me see if I can. So I've been making I've been making some notes and like little like algebra derivations uh, to model a heat sink and basically like. If this is your heat sink's uh, thermal resistance, so the, the worse your heat sink is, the, the more thermal resistance it has. And then if this is the thermal resistance, the, the contact resistance between your GPU or CPU and the heat sink itself, then like if, if your um, thermal resistance of the heat sink is large enough, then no matter how low you get your um, contact resistance, aka the thermal paste, it, it's still not going to make a dent in the overall equivalent resistance so um, that that definitely makes sense but I think we are getting like a couple more watts out of this so you know on my channel um, I talk mostly in terms of watts instead of uh, degrees because first of all we're dealing with uh, really high power concentration laptops um, that we would like to run at the highest temperature to maximize performance rather than you know um, PCs which have like, like desktop PCs, which often have more than enough temperature to run at full boost and not even, uh, you know, at the max temperature. So we usually keep the temperature the same, just let it throttle at 90 degrees and then see what the wattage naturally goes to. So, however, if, you know, we, we tried to create a controlled variable for the power, so let's say if we did, like, you know, 18 watts, or let's say 17 watts for the power, we're, we're setting a power limit, right? Then we can kind of see a bit of a temperature drop. But also I wonder, you know, Larry, do you think, do you think I could have applied like a little bit too little uh, liquid metal? Because like, we don't know how flat the base plate is, right? Temperature's ADA this thing, right? Yeah. So like, I'm just gonna go ahead and say, can, can you can you pull up your GPU temp right now? Is it uh, is it is it is is it only CPU load right now? Yeah. There's no firmware running. GPU temperature is at 72 degrees, and then it just okay. uh, it just went back to so, zero. So this means that your uh, heat sink temperature is pretty damn high right now. Yeah. Um, your CPU isn't even much hotter than the heat sink. Um, right. I'll just say at this point. Yeah, yeah, that that's right. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so you're, much you're, for reminding you're me. Running into, you're running into, I can't get the heat out of that piece of metal. No, I can't get the heat from the processor into the metal. Yeah, that's right. And that's exactly what I was saying, guys, about about the thermal resistor network, where this is what's mattering right now. This is the the heat sinks thermal resistance that's, that's dominant in this thermal resistor network. Well, yeah. So, so, so it, yeah. I mean, so, if you're, you know, if, here's the thing. Yeah. Like, when when you're at like a point like this, the real problem is you want to get that heat out of the case. Yeah, and hence, um, hence cooling mods. Uh, you know what? I'm also noticing slightly lower um, surface temperatures on the on the keyboard deck, especially the palm rest area. So normally I like to put uh, graphite sheets all um, along the inside of the chassis to actually heat up the palm rest a little bit more because I don't really care. I don't mind having a warm palm rest. I'm co personally comfortable with like up to, you know, 45 degrees or something um, on, on the palm rest. And so that gets a little bit more heat out via the graphite sheets. But right now we don't have that. So, you know, this is like, not utilizing as much of the casing or the chassis for cooling as um, on my modified Notebook X Pro. Okay, so interesting. Now we're at 20 watts. So I guess like the fan has fully ramped up now. That's a that's a that's a good development. Let's see if we go now we go back to 17 watts. Or, you know, yeah, what the temperature, oh, it's, 
I mean, it'll, it'll drop because right now that was a that was a transient, so it'll it'll readjust itself. Like the temperature will kind of just start go through that transient phase and uh, settle to a different equilibrium value. Michael, you know what's a fun uh, thing to see when I'm coming back here? You can spray a little bit of alcohol into the heat sink while it's uh, running the load. You know, you get like a, you get like an instant thirty C drop on CPU. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, doesn't um. Doesn't some I remember that there's like some some kind of car or something that does that? I think it's like the um, I think it's one of the oh I think it's the Porsche 911 GT2 RS that sprays that sprays water on the brakes. Well, this is a good way to do it. Yeah, evaporative cooling or phase change. Yeah, is one of the most powerful phenomenon. most powerful physical phenomena. Um, phase change runs the world. The Earth depends on phase change water to you know, function. That's how rain and the seas and all that works. Right? Yay, first grade science, the water cycle, capacity, love it. The heat capacity of water, the ability to change phases at reasonable temperatures is so important. It's so powerful. The amount of heat you can handle with all cooling power is yeah. Same. And by the yeah. way, this is what's happening in heat pipes. You're use also using latent heat to uh, or phase change. Um, you know, you, you literally have little like bits of uh, you know uh, liquid in the in the heat pipe that evaporates and condenses and goes in a cycle. So, um, so I you know speaking of like squirting liquid, I have I have considered like doing a little like fountain type thing where it just continuously you know. Um, squirts liquid at the bottom of the laptop since the bottom has no vent anyway. Now, of course, the bottom is is uh, a lot more removed from the CPU, so the thermal path pathway is not um, not well, optimal LCT there. But did this. yeah, didn't they like d uh, decrease the temperature by like ten degrees or something? But I'm I'm saying like because no they dumped it in a in a static pool of water in a in a like a pan of water didn't they? Yeah, but I mean that's good enough. Because that only takes care of transient. Uh, once let your water has heated let, up. Let me tell you about something really 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 cool though. What the specific heat of water? No, three M Novak. What what's that? It boils. Thirty degrees Celsius. Mm. You get a tank in there, and you put your motherboard in it. Take off all the heat sinks. No thermal case. No heat sinks. Just straight bore it in clear liquid. Oh boy, this this sounds like. Lid, I think it's gonna look kind of similar to uh, LN2 cooling. Sink. No, you just put a normal heat sink and a cooler on it. And you let that thing run. It's super cool. Yeah, yeah. and all of that will so, get so used up though, right? You don't you don't get to have a cycle. Or I guess you could uh, implement a closed loop cycle. Uh, well, here's the thing. It's a closed loop, but here's what happens. Your CPU boils the liquid directly on chip. That's like excellent cooling. That's like that, that's insane levels of cooling. Well, so actually, it depends. So, so um, because because your your surface area of the chip is really small, so you'd actually it depends on um the the resistance, the thermal resistance of the heat sink. If the thermal resistance of the heat sink um, is, is good enough that it, even with the increased contact resistance between the heat sink and the chip, it'll still be advantageous to put a heat sink on it instead of pouring it directly on the lower die. So the thing is, right, um, so anyway, but like what I'm saying is, um, just, just as an example, you don't yeah. need to, it probably perform better. Um, you get such a good performance off that liquid yeah. that it's it's actually amazing. You just get like really low temps. You can overclock. You can do anything you want. And the really cool thing is it boils and it bubbles up to the surface. And you don't have to have all that gas, right? And you have like a little radiator, like let's say a liquid cooling radiator. You can literally just circulate air between the outside and the inside. And the vapor hits that radiator and it condenses and it drips down back into the tank. So it's closed loop. Basically, a heat pipe, but your whole computer is in the cooling. Hmm, 
That might be a future project. Really amazing stuff. Really amazing stuff. Uh, really amazing stuff. Have, have, uh, have any people amazing. used it? Like, have you seen any like projects of people using it? Where yes, have you seen yes, that? Yes. It's they're on YouTube. Just Google, just search um, 3M Novak uh, cooling, immersion cooling. Um, they're doing it in data centers for Bitcoin mining and stuff like that. The whole server and a big tank of this stuff. It's neat. Hmm, maybe I should get into that. It's That'll expensive. be an interesting project. That's expensive, though. It's like 500 bucks. Hmm. Well, that'll still be cool, though. Um, okay, so I guess, like, what we can do is... Uh, shoot, I can't find my, uh, my USB drive that I had out just a couple hours ago for the Windows and stuff. it somewhere on my desk because I'm trying to install Windows um, again for you guys so that uh, we can kind of walk through like problem solving the uh, the drivers but I don't see where my installation USB is so you know what um, I think I think we're gonna we're gonna do that later um, you know I promised you guys to figure that out together um, I think I'm gonna take some time to figure that out myself and do some research um, instead of you know looking through web pages after web, web pages um, uh, and Huawei websites and whatnot um, to try to figure out the drivers so I'll definitely post a video so stay tuned to the to the channel for that um, and I'll probably post it to the to the blog and the subreddit as well and, and then I'll figure out how to how to get a fresh windows install working on this laptop Okay, what's going on with, uh, oh, Dirt Bauer did the stuff with 3M Novec. Okay, I'll check that out. That, that sounds really interesting. So, big thermal pads are the heat sink and transferring heat to the bottom cover. So, that's that's great if you, uh, one, use your, um, use a cooling stand like this because you're transferring all that heat to the bottom. So, any fan that you attach to the bottom will be really effective. Um, or if you always, uh, yeah, if you always have your laptop kind of elevated from from the desk from the surface, and also if you never basically lap your laptop, if you ever put it on your lap, so that's going to be really bad for your, for your laps, for your side, uh, for your thighs. Um, and the but thing about that is like uh, it, it doesn't really. Things that you, laptop use affects. We, we won't talk about them, but <laughs> no. something about the human reproductive system. It's not effective. Yeah, it um, it it's effective, but it's not efficient. Like it does increase your cooling capacity, but it the way that it does it is really not that great because like you're you have so much trade offs, right? And that's what efficiency means. Like you're achieving the thing you want, but then you have so much uh, so much trade off. So yeah, um, what else would you guys like to see for for this laptop and? from me today. Um, I will, again, do the system reinstall on my own time and uh, post a guide, probably a written guide, uh, detailing every step, where to get the drivers with, you know, hyperlinks to the resources. Uh, but other than that, is there anything else that you would like to see? Because it's, uh, it's been three hours and I really appreciate all of you guys uh, sticking around. And I hope it was, it was as fun for you guys as it was for me. Uh, great joinings. Yeah, um, and uh, stay tuned to bradshacks.com for uh, any future mods that I'm probably going to make for this uh, laptop. Um, custom heat sinks, that's on the table. 3M Novec, that might be on the table. Um, who else, right? We're going to experiment this with, with this further, so stay tuned to uh, my channel. Subscribe. Go to bradshacks.com, you know, bookmark it, see if uh, you, you, there are more blog posts. And uh, yeah, if you haven't already joined the subreddit, r slash pro, join it. It's a great community of users helping each other out. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's about it. And thank you so much to my friend Larry for co-hosting this show today. Uh, he's been an yeah, amazing resource. <laughs>
Thanks for having me. <laughs> no problem. It's always a pleasure. Um, yeah, so check out Larry's channel. Um, I'll, I'll link it in the description below if you want to check out his content. He's, he, he's made like fan swaps for laptops. He's, he's done like teardowns of interesting things. So check out his channel. Okay, cool. Anything, anything yeah, I've, else? Yeah, uh, turn off my main podcast. Yeah. Uh, you can also go to my channel um, and go to the channels tab and you'll see Larry's channel. Um, anything else you want to plug, Larry? No, honestly, um, that was a good, uh, that's a good uh, stream. Cool. I, you know, I, I really enjoyed it. Thank you for, you know, delivering this content to us. You know, it's, uh, it's uh, some exciting stuff. Yeah. coming out and uh, so I get to have a little play with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, I had a great time um, doing this with you guys, uh, with all of you today, and uh, we'll call it a day. Um, uh, stay tuned and uh, might have more content coming up. Might do a lot in another live stream at some point with another laptop, so who knows? Alright, so uh, I'll see you guys. Bye guys.